welcome from Sweden. We're here at the Crescent UCI World Cup women's race in Vogoda. And it's um, a pretty chilly 13 degrees. It's been raining on and off the entire week. But at the moment, it's dry. And uh, the women are lining up for um, their road race for 132 kilometers. You can see them here. We have uh, the leader in the overall World Cup standings on the line, Lizzie Armitstead. And um, she's got a lead of 130 points on the Swedish champion, the woman having a home race today, Emma Johansson. That's a big yawn from uh, the Bigler rider. It's uh, quite an early start. This is Lotte Lepisto. A few weeks ago, she was on the podium in Hamburg. That was quite a big thing for her. She was the third in a race that was won by Mariana Voss ahead of Georgia Bronzini. So we're going to have a circuit race today of um, 132 kilometers. Very exciting race, never a meter of flat, a lot of technical cornering. And uh, sitting next to me, my name is Jose Bain, next, sitting next to me is Rochelle Kilmore. Rochelle, you know the course, you've ridden here before. What kind of race can we expect today? Well, it's one of the most exciting World Cups because it's very unpredictable. It's not specifically a climber's course and it's not a sprinter's course. It's something in the middle. So it's a very hard race to predict, very technical. The first part of the circuit, so the circuit's 11 kilometres, but the first part is like a criterium. And obviously the roads are wet today, so it's extremely technical and, and better suited to those riders that have a little bit more experience. You need to stay very well positioned at the front. And around the back of the course, there's this climb that we're seeing at the moment, a hill sprint. And it's, uh, it's quite tough, you know, it's, it's not long enough for the climbers to really excel, but it's, uh, it's long enough to hurt the legs of the sprinters. So it becomes a very exciting race. It's going to wear them out after all the laps that we're going to do. 11 laps today, 11 times the climb, and uh, it's about 6k from the finish. So uh, we're going to see what happens there. It's quite a fast descent into Fukuda City. Or, well, it's not really a city, it's more like a town. But it's quite a, a fast road in through uh, beautiful woodland here in Sweden. You can see 13 degrees is indicated on the thermometer. It's rainy, unfortunately. This morning we woke up with clear blue skies and we had the hope that we would have a dry race today. But it's not going to happen. We also had a really, really wet team time trial. That was quite a spectacular event. Yeah, it was. I mean, it's always a very exciting event, the time trial, because it, it's the only team time trial World Cup uh, on the women's calendar, and the riders look forward to that because it's a new challenge. And it, it falls a couple of days before this World Cup, so it's a bit of an opener. There's Kirsten Weald, one of the favourites for today, of course, one on this course before, one of the better sprinters in the world. So if for her, it's probably thinking and wondering how the race is going to go rather than making the race. It's all about how is this race going to go today and am I going to have a chance to have a sprint at the finish. I spoke to her before. She won the race in 2010, like you said, with uh, the Cervelo team back then. She was really looking to forward to it. She likes uh, riding in the rain. We see uh, Susanna Saucy there, the former European champion for Astana Big Pink. And um, it's only a few metres. Mayana Vos lining up and this is the individual ranking. It's uh, not been updated um, completely, but Elizabeth Armistead, or Lizzie, and she goes by, has a 130-point margin on Emma Johansson because she won five points in the team time trial with Bors Dormans. Ellen van Dijk, the winner of the Tour of Flanders, is a third. Anna van der Breche, Bronzini, Kirsten Bildt, Longo Borghini, who's not here. And the same goes for Pauline ferrand Prevot because she is um, in Miribel in France doing the mountain bike World Cup. The start list here. We start, of course, with the Bulls Dormans girls. Christina Mayer is not starting today. She uh, has a fever and um, has to stay back in the hotel, unfortunately, for the Luxembourg champion. We see Amik van Floten. She won the race before, just like Mayana Vos did two times already. Valentina Scandalara. We are bound to see some attacks by the Italian. She is always a very offensive rider, very attacking style she has. We see the uh, girls from uh, Giant Shimano with Amy Peters and, of course, uh, Kirsten Wilt. And then um, we see all the teams present here. We've got some national teams as well. Estonia, for example, the Swedish national team. And then they're off. The peloton is off with Kirsten Wilt and Mianna Vos, two former winners on the first line. And, of course, also Lizzie Armstead, the leader in the overall World Cup. 
Yeah, she's got a 130 point margin on Emma Johansson. Do you think that she can even lose the World Cup now? Well, she can, she can lose it on paper. She can lose this World Cup series. She's got a very handy lead, and it's been a while since we've seen that um, the race is open going into the last two rounds of the World Cup. But Emma Johansson, she'll want to win this. She's been on the podium three times at her home World Cup and she's never managed to win it. But uh, it's a bit difficult for Emma Johansson because she sits in second place on the World Cup Series. She wants to win this particular race. So she's got two things to think about today, whether she's going to race for the series to protect her points or take a risk and go for the win. If she was to win here today, it would make the final round very, very exciting. Yeah, Emma Johansson, of course, the Swedish champion. So she's, she will be, will be very, very proud wearing that jersey in front of her home crowd. She is um, a very good rider and uh, she won the Trofeo Binder this year. Out of all the World Cups this year, we've seen seven different winners. That's really good for women's racing, isn't it? Well, it's been exciting racing. It's been quite unpredictable. And also today, I mean, we can't predict who the winner's going to be. Of course, Mariana Voss is quite strong and uh, an easy pick for the win, but it's not so easy for her to win with so, such strong teams here and different motives. And it's just very unpredictable. It's, it's hard to choose. And yet, like you said, seven different winners this year. So each race has been uh, also very unpredictable and exciting. Yeah, the biggest competition for Mariana Vos is maybe even in her own team with uh, former ridden Annemiek van Vleuten and Anna van der Breggen, who is really on a roll. She won the Tour of Norway in a really nice manner. So she's got really, really strong street teammates. Uh, we've got Lucinda Brands, Talita de Jong, Roxanne Kneteman, a really hardworking cyclist and Van der Breggen van Vleuten and Vos. On paper, the strongest team, you think? I think it has to be. We see an attack already. The Sw Swedish rider is very keen to get out there and get some TV time on their uh, home ground. It's Linnea Schöblom for the Swedish team. It's one of these races where if you're going to go out this early in attack, then you're probably not thinking about winning the race because it's a very taxing course. And this will be a, a move, obviously, for a teammate or for an ulterior motive. But to win the bike race, it's, it's very early on this circuit to, to go out on the attack. If we see an attacking uh, race in the first half, it'll be because they, it's wet and they want to dwindle down the bunch and come into the final laps with a bit of a smaller group than this. Well, they're coming to get her really fast now. We already see some uh, Futon Sovetan rider in trouble at the back. It's uh, Marina Likanova. Yeah, all the top teams are here. Of course, Bulls Dolmans, Rabobank, Specialized Lululemon, who won the team time trial. Orica, High Tech. We've got uh, Wiggle Honda, Giant Shimano. Basically, um, everybody's here. Well, you just named a lot of teams there at the uh, top of women's cycling, and it's just great to see that uh, now it's not just a, a race between one or two teams. We just mentioned that Rabobank would have to be the clear favourites. They have the strongest rider in the world, which is Mariana Voss, and then they have a very strong team around her as well. So it's part, hard to go past Rabobank as the favourites, but there are so many teams now that are at a very, very high level, and uh, you can't go into a race and try and to, to win as an individual anymore. Five or ten years ago, you could, but now you need to have that strong team around you, and we see that there's... You know, there's 15 really, really well-structured, strong teams at the top of women, women's cycling. Well, cycling is, of course, a sport you do individually, but it is a team sport. Absolutely. It's uh, such a team sport. And, in fact, when sponsors come in to, uh, to watch women's cycling, I think they're blown away by the, uh, how, how important the actual team and the structure and the makeup of the team is. Most women's teams have about 15 or 16 women riders in the team, but only six can start each race. And that'll be based on who's in form, what the course is like, uh, which riders the leader in that race would like to have around them. So it's very hard to even make a team of six these days. There's a lot of disappointing riders that would love to be in Sweden, but within their team of 15 or 16 riders, the team can only select six riders. So when you get to start at a World Cup, it's quite prestigious for any woman to actually just be on the start line. This also has something to do with, of course, the um, time time, team time trial we had because the teams are the same? Uh, some of the teams are the same, yeah. They, they don't mix it up. Uh, they come to Sweden for a block of racing, so they come with their team time trial team, and then they'll start the same six two days later. But uh, last year we saw a number of riders come in for the road race, and they swapped some riders out of the time trial and into the road race. And also some teams here, like, for example, Wiggle Honda, who did not do the team time trial at all. That's right. So 
Wigong Honda didn't ride the team time trial, possibly because they come here with a couple of favourites in Georgia Bronzini and Linda Willemsen, and they want to put all of their eggs into one basket. And uh, with the team time trial, you need to specifically train for that event to be... We saw Specialised Lululemon absolutely blow the field away, and I think that's because of the time they spend together specialising in the team time trial to get every rider perfectly on the wheel without a millimetre between them and to know each other. And it takes a lot of energy from a team to target a team time trial. Throughout the year, you need to come together for training for a few times. We see another attack from uh, one of the Swedish uh, women from the Swedish national team. This is Hanna Nilsson. She uh, does the same as her teammate did a few minutes back. Yeah, just like you said, Rochelle, this is um, not getting her anywhere. No, but I think uh, it's really great to see that these young Swedish riders that, that get a start in a World Cup um, on home ground, that they're getting out there and making a bit of the race. And uh, interestingly, the director of the Swedish national team is the, the partner of Emma Johansson, and he certainly knows how to make a race. And obviously he's said to his riders, OK, I want you to get out there and uh, mix this up and just have a go. You know, give the riders a specific goal and ask them to do it. And... Uh, it's better than just sitting in, you know, out there having a go, getting a feeling of what it's like to be out in the front of a uh, world-class peloton. And uh, that's really, really exhilarating. You know, you have all these emotions and feelings of like, can I do it? How long can I stay out here? Are they chasing? Are they sitting up? And I think it's great that uh, they don't just sit in the bunch and they have a bit of a go. They find their limits and get into a rhythm and just see, see what happens. This is one of the very few uh, longer stretches, just like you said before. It's a very criterium style racing in the um, first part of this lap. A lot of uh, turns and cornering. And uh, we see the peloton is um, taking a bit of um, an oval shape at the moment. The pace is uh, quite high. It's interesting that there's a few riders sitting off the back, but I think that's got a lot to do with nerves. And obviously, if you are a nervous rider and you have to sit a couple of lengths off the back, then you're going to use more energy. And on this kind of course, you can't afford to waste any energy because it comes down to the, the final few laps where you have to conserve. They're about to go up the hill here. And uh, in the final few laps, this is where the race is going to be made. Well, the Swedish girl is being reined in again, Sarah Nielsen. So we've got a compact field again with um, some teams already at the front of the bunch. With Chantal Black, we see there for specialized Lululemon. And all the big teams have some riders um, up front to control. And it started raining again. Raining, and there's also a lot of wind. It's um, going to be a tailwind sprint today. And we're on the climb for the first time. We have mountain points today. Two times six. The um, current holder of the UCI mountain jersey is um, Alena Amielusik. She is not here today. She is training out in Livorno. She has um, a gap of um, two points on four riders. And um, of those four riders, only Armistead is here. The others are Pauline ferrand Provo, Esli Mormon, and the now retired Anna Pooley. And Anna van der Brecher is uh, closest by at eight points. We're going to have uh, two mountain sprints, one in lap five and one in lap nine. So that uh, classification could be wide open today. And we're going to see uh, if, for example, van der Brechen is going to target that um, jersey. Though the sports director said, Coach Mouraud told me that these um, secondary classifications are not a goal for the team today. Well, there's been a lot of discussion about whether Rabo Bank will ride for Mariana Voss or Van der Bregen or Van Vluten. They've got so much strength in that team. But uh, Van der Bregen's come into form recently and very, very hard worker for the team. And we know that Mariana Voss will be relying on her Dutch compatriots for support at the World Championships. So it may be that today she lets one of the other riders in the team have a chance. One of the great things that I saw at the podium ceremony for the team time trial where uh, Rabobank got second is that Mayana Voss was all the way at the back. She uh, let all her teammates stand at the front and she was posturing there at the back being, uh, OK, I want my teammates to have some limelight as well. I like that. Yeah, well, that's the type of person she is. We hear that she's one of the most generous, caring people in the peloton and uh, she's, she's liked by all. She's a fantastic role model for the sport and she gives her time very freely. Yeah, we also saw a very moving tweet and interview by Mayana Voss because um, it's not, ha not all happy today because uh, yesterday a very promising young rider died during the Mary Bell Mountain Bike World Cup. 
the Dutch um, cyclocross European champion Anne Fleur Kalvenhaar. She crashed during the eliminator course and uh, the doctors could not save her. Only 20 years young and uh, the peloton held a minute of silence to remember her. Um, it is a close-knit community, women's cycling is. Absolutely. It's a family. You know, you have to travel on the road together. You, you, you basically live your lives out of each other's pockets. You're in the same hotel, same restaurants, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and working together as well. So it's not a very normal environment where you go to work and then you go home to your families. You're on the road with this family of cycling the whole time. You walk into a hotel and there's 15 different teams in the same hotel and and it becomes a, a family. I mean, you need to be, be, be friends with everybody and um, you know want to live that life and share that life and experiences with those people around you. So it does become a very tight-knit family family sport. This is the third rider for the Swedish national team to uh, to try her luck. Malin Riedlund is her name. So uh, every team has got uh, six riders lined up today. Some teams have uh, got one rider less like um, for example Bulls Dolmans who have to miss the Luxembourg champion Christina Mayeres. Also um, BTC City Ljubljana is here with five riders. But six riders, which is um, completely different usually for men's racing where the teams are eight or even nine riders in the Grand Tours. And uh, six riders makes it much more difficult to, uh, to control a race. Yeah, we just had the climb now, and this is uh, quite a straight section into Vogada, where uh, the riders face another set of uh, treacherous turns. And the most difficult thing here is that um, it's wet, and uh, some leaves are already starting to fall, making it even uh, more slippy. So Riedlund, and we, uh, we see one chaser in the background at the moment, and she's uh, looking behind her, seeing the other rider um, coming up to her. Looks like somebody from Bigler. In this position, I think she'll be hoping that somebody does reach her to share a little bit of the workload and to give them more of a chance to stay away from the peloton for just that little bit longer. It is indeed one of the riders for uh, the Bigler cycling team. They were fifth in uh, the team time trial and seeing the posture, it might as well be Vera Kudoda. Well, if it is Vera Kudoda, it could be a dangerous move. She's very famous for being able to get out in front and hold the peloton off for a very, very long time and uh, make the peloton work hard to, to bring her back. So we'll get a better shot in a moment and find out if that indeed is Vera Kudoda. Now, this is one of the more um, promising moves. The other two Swedish girls were reined in quite quickly. But if Kudoda joins uh, Riedlund, it's, uh, it might stick for a while. Well, you can see the back of the peloton is uh, stretching out a little bit. So the peloton are having to work. And this is, I think you're right, I think that is very Kudoda. It's got that, that posture that you can recognize. And that might be why there's a bit of a response from the peloton, because she's a very, very strong rider. And if she moves away, yes, it is. She's one of the tallest uh, women in the peloton, uh, just like Ellen van Dijk. It's uh, both Dutch women that are uh, notoriously tall. And she is. Um, She's an attacker, like uh, Rochelle told you. And she's also um, a track racer. She was in the uh, London team pursuit for the Netherlands. And she won races with 60, 70, 80 kilometer solo attacks. That's how strong she is. Well, she's been in the sport for a very long time. It's her 14th year as a professional. So she's been around for a very long time. She's only 30 years. 30 years old, still mixes it up on the track and the road. But she's definitely got a lot of experience and that move wouldn't have uh, been a, a split moment decision. She would have planned this out and that she wants to be out there early and, and make the peloton work hard. But uh, a very, very strong rider. So we might see this one will take a little bit of work to bring back. The other rider uh, is uh, Rydlund, as we told you. She was second at the Swedish National Championships in the road race, just behind Emma Johansson, and she was... Um, she's, uh, she's quite a powerful rider as well, Rydlund is. She's got a ni po nice posture on the bike as well, nice and deep. And as you can see, it's uh, started raining again as they make their way back to Vogorda. Another uh, attempt, three riders trying to break clear from the peloton and then um, we could have a five women breakaway which uh, really makes their chances a bit bigger 
Many more attacks coming now. They see the danger that Vera is. Absolutely. It's just one of those courses, too, where the riders get out of sight very quickly around the corners. And when that's the case, the riders are out of sight, then it's a little bit more difficult to bring back or to judge how far away they are. So on this kind of course, they won't want to let Veracudo to get too far out in front. Three riders. We've got somebody from Park Hotel, another Swedish rider, and a rider from Rosvelo. Well, it's very early in the race, but the Swedish are doing a great job so far. They've been in the moves, they've initi initiated the moves, and now we see another a Swedish rider coming across. So the tactics are, are really good tactics. They're having a go, and they're, they're making this race, and they're putting themselves out there. So it's, uh, it's really fantastic to see. The Park Hotel rider is Mon Monique van Rey. She made a really, really nasty fall in the Tour of Drenthe where she broke her uh, collarbone, but she's, uh, she's been back racing if I remember correctly, she's also a speed skater, which is a combination that's not very uncommon. It happens more. It's both in endurance sports, of course. They're now making their way back to the finish line. We just had our first 11-kilometer uh, lap. We're in the side of the Finnish cameras. So uh, we've got a 350-meter straight line through the finish after a really difficult turn and especially under these wet conditions it takes a lot of bike skills to uh, to take that turn last year Mianna Vos took it fantastically with all the risks she could take winning her second World Cup here in Fogada this is that turn you can see that uh, Kudoda takes uh, caution well the sprint will be at much higher speed when they come in you can see that they're, they're on parve here so they come around on asphalt and they hit the parve and the sprint is a little bit of different surfaces. You're on Parve, then smooth surface Parve. So it will suit the type of rider like Mariana Voss because she doesn't need a dead flat surface. You know, growing up in Holland, she's very good on the cobbles and the Parve and the change of surfaces. And this will be her type of sprint because you've got that technical corner. You just see the bunch come around now. Perhaps a little bit too far out for some sprinters, like the likes of George Bronzini. But for, for Mariana Voss, when she gets around a corner like that, she can put two or three metres into somebody, and uh, it definitely favours the type of rider like Mariana Voss, this type of finish. Let's see who's chasing these uh, two leaders. Let's see if we can get names. They're crossing the finish line. 20 seconds behind our two leaders, Riedlund and Kudoda. And now we see high tech, Bulls. Some big teams are sending uh, girls up for the break. This is the feeding zone, but feeding's not allowed at this point. It will take a few laps more before the Swanyers are um, allowed to take on, take out the bottles for the riders. Well, the pace is starting to pick up in the peloton. You can see that it's strung out at the front there, so there's a few riders and teams that want to keep this uh, breakaway in check not let it get too far out of hand and just keep a little bit of control. Mayana Voss there with two of her teammates, a little bit back in the bunch, but no problem for that. I have to stay clear of the white lines, of course. They are notoriously slippy. Yeah, it's one of the big rules, isn't it, when there's a little bit of uh, rain to stay off those white lines in the corners. It's not that there's oil or slick on the roads here because it's been raining constantly for the past week. Sometimes when you're racing in South Europe, for example, there's a lot of um, rubber and oil and whatever on the road. The two um, Kazakh, Kazakhstani girls from Astana are already being dropped. They were also um, dropped quite fast during the team time trial. Well, there's a flick of the arm. That means that Vera wants some help. She wants to keep this moving and she wants to do, you know, she wants her uh, helper there to get, give a little bit of a, a turn on the front. Sure, Vera Kudo will be happy to do the majority of the work out here. She knows that she's the stronger rider. She's been in this position many, many times. See, she's got also got a beautiful pedaling style, a very flat foot across the bottom of the pedaling stroke. She drops her heel a little bit more than the other athletes. The Bigler team was really quite happy with how they did during the team time trial. They were fifth, and seeing the depth of, depth of the um, team that they have here, they, uh, they couldn't have done better, but they uh, have hopes for a top five 
also next month in uh, Ponferrada in Spain where it's uh, the World Championships. But clearly, specialized Lululemon are the biggest favorite for that world title. Last year, the margin on uh, the number two Rabo Liv was only 38 seconds. But despite losing uh, team, the time trial world champion Ellen van Dijk, they doubled the margin this year. It was just incredible. Well, yeah, that team time trial a couple of days ago, it's a very good indication of what kind of form specialized Lululemon are in going into the world championships now just a month away. But must be a little bit of a knock for the Rabo team as well, just a knock in their confidence. What can they do to get that those extra seconds back? That's a you know it's a big big margin. And talking to the Rabo riders, they're, they're they're scratching their heads because they they had a good ride. They're very very good technically. They've done a lot of training together, so they're starting to ask, what can we do leading in to the World Championships to get that time gap down? They were actually really really disappointed because they thought they had it. They had trained on it. It was one of their season goals before going into this season, having two world titles for Mariana Vos and going up for the uh, team time trial world title next month in Spain. But despite doing all the work and all the training for the time trial, team time trial, they, they lost more and more time on specialized Lululemon, who seemed to be unbeatable in this discipline. And Annemiek van Vloten was really realistic. And she says, well, in a month's time, we're not going to change this anymore. This looks like a pretty, pretty big gap, so Vera Kudoda, she's put some pressure on in the uh, the breakaway there, and that's a very, very handy gap that they've got. This is a technical part of the circuit, the most p technical part, so being in that breakaway with just two riders can potentially get you around and get you few, a few more seconds through this section because the peloton have to worry about each other. You can see the front of the peloton's very strung out there, so they're still working. They're working to try and bring that back, but uh, we can expect the two riders out in front to get a little bit tired. Uh, they've only got two of them to do the work, whereas the peloton here have, you know, still a lot of a lot of women who are willing to do turns on the front. So it's most likely we, we will see the break come back, but um, it's been a very good move, and they will be able to stay out there for quite some time. You can also uh, join in on the action today on the UCI Road Women World Cup in Vogorda. If you have Twitter, just uh, let us know your questions. Let us know what you want um, to know about women's cycling. And uh, of course, we've got one of uh, one of the experts here in Rochelle Gilmore, and she can ask your uh, she can answer your questions. So um, tweet in your questions uh, using um, my Twitter handle, which is Tour de Jose or use um, the UCI Women's Cycling Twitter handle and we will see your questions uh, appear here on the screen and we can uh, we can answer them. So uh, join in. We've only uh, had 23 minutes of racing. A two-woman break with uh, Vera Kudoder and um, the Swedish runner-up for the uh, Swedish National Championships, Malin Rutlund. The gap reportedly is now around 30 seconds. Well, we saw Marlin, the Swedish rider, already taking food on board. She was sitting behind Vera Kudoda. She was having something to eat. That goes to show the experience of the race director back in the car, which is Martin Vespi. And he'll know this course, and he'll know, the, obviously, the team in the course very, very well. They've probably trained on it a million times. But to tell your rider to eat this early in the race is a very smart, smart move in the cold weather. You tend to use a little bit more energy uh, nerves coming into a World Cup for these riders. The cold weather, so only 24 minutes into the race and taking some food on board. Very smart. So the riders today, they have radio communication with their directors back in the car, so they'll be getting feedback on what time gap they have. You know, just a little reminder to keep eating and drinking, uh, how much work to do on the front and when the corners are coming up and if there's obstacles on the course. And it's good to have radios at World Cups at this level just to get that type of information. Yeah, eating is important. It's cold. So uh, it's very important to take on um, both water and food. And if it's cold, you tend to, to forget that, don't yeah, you? Yeah, absolutely. It's very, very easy out there. And a course like this is so technical as well. You're concentrating so much that you can forget to drink. And uh, just having that uh, message in your ear, you know, OK, take a drink, keep, keep the fluids on board, because you won't feel thirsty until it's too late, obviously, in this type of weather. So it's um, very important to start eating and drinking early in the race. It seems very weird that a team director has to tell the riders to eat. Absolutely. I mean, it is weird. It's very weird. 
um, because our training, it should become habit to drink every every 15 minutes, every 10 minutes, take a sip of your drink, and it should become habit. But uh, you get into the race and everything's happening and you get stressed about my tyres, are, are they too flat? Have I got the right equipment on it? Have I got too many clothes on it? Have I got all these things come into your head and it's just so easy for your mind to be occupied by other things rather than, you know, eating and drinking. And it's, it's just easy to forget. And... Uh, when you say it out loud that it's easy to forget to eat and drink, it sounds a little bit silly, but it happens with all the stresses that comes with racing at this level. We see uh, German champion Lisa Brennauer for Specialized Lululemon, also Chantal Black. You can also see uh, some riders for Orica AIS and Ellen van Dijk uh, at the front of the bunch, but the gap is reportedly up to 45 seconds already. And we can see that they're, they're working quite hard. There's Vera on the front there followed by Marlin of the Swedish national team. Remember Vera Kudota was one of the aggressors at the La Course race, attacking a lot. The Women's Tour de France event held on the Champs-Élysées. She was one of the most aggressive riders in the race. Not scared to have a go, she's very well known for being an attacking type of rider. You're, of course, a well-known advocate for women's cycling, being a, a top racer yourself, a former Commonwealth champion. You had to give up your crown this year There's to Lizzie, uh, Lizzie Armstead. And she's smiling. She likes this kind of weather, doesn't she? Absolutely. It was crazy at the Commonwealth Games when uh, I spoke to her before the race, and she said, oh, I really wish it would rain some more. You know, we've got so many athletes sitting there saying, oh, I hope it doesn't rain today. But uh, there she is with the pink sunglasses on, Lizzie Armstead. She's the new Commonwealth Games champion something that she really wanted to achieve in her career. She's had a phenomenal year this year, the best we've ever seen um, from Lizzie Armistead. She's shown promise in races, and obviously she was second at the Olympics in London to Mariana Voss, but the year that she's had this year has just... People knew she was capable of it, but it's been a super impressive year. She, of course, won the first um, World Cup of the season in Drenthe. That was uh, a great way to get, uh, get the season started, of course. Um, she wore the, uh, she wears the overall World Cup leaders jersey from the start. She uh, was second in the Ronde van Vlaanderen behind her teammate Ellen van Dijk. She was second in the Trofeo Binder, and um, that means, and she was second in the Flesh Wallon. So out of the four World Cup races that Armistead did this year, she was on the podium four times, three times second, one time as a winner. So uh, that makes her, of course, uh, the worthy wearer of the overall World Cup leader's jersey. It's a great um, classification. It's a different classification than the uh, UCI ranking where Marianne Vos is uh, now the leader again. She uh, took over the lead from Emma Johansson. But that means that all the races that have UCI status are included, aren't they? Yeah, all the UCI races uh, during the year, including the World Cups, go towards your UCI ranking. And then you have the World Cup series, which is a, a series of, I think it's nine World Cups. Or is this the yeah, ninth World Cup? This is the eighth. And uh, next One week in France, we're going to have uh, number nine. Some people say that it is the most prestigious to win a World Cup series in the year rather than the UCI ranking because it's more of a specific um, targeted series of races, those nine races. Um, every year it's different. Sometimes it's ten, sometimes it's eight, sometimes it's nine. But uh, the World Cup series... If you can win that in your career, you can prove that uh, at that time you were the best in your sport. And uh, this year, it's a very fair World Cup. There's a, there's a mix of sprint races, uh, classic style races and uh, climbing races. So it's a, there's a little bit for everyone. It's just the Grand Tour riders, I guess. They don't, I mean, Plouet is quite tough. That's probably really, really a climber's course for the next World Cup. This one's a little bit in the middle, so it can suit any type of rider. Yeah, I spoke to Kirsten Wilt this morning and she said it's kind of a mixture between tactics and being the strongest uh, rider on the course. So you have to be both smart and strong today. And uh, of course, she won it in 2010 after great teamwork from the Cervelo test team. And uh, she really wants it again. Kirsten Wilt does. Also, uh, just like Fira Kudoder, somebody who makes the combination between um, track racing and uh, road racing. She uh, wants to go to Rio the Chanero in uh, 2016 for the Omnium, just like uh, Laura Trott, for example, and Jolien Dore, the Belgian champion. Is it a good combination to, because um, you're Australian and, and track racing is, is, is obviously the foundation 
for a many road races. Is it a good combination? I think it's good to, uh, to mix it up a little bit, but it's becoming more difficult to be really good at both uh, because the level of women's cycling is, is lifting. You need to be a very a specialist in, in what you choose to do to be the very best. It's just difficult to go from being, uh, you know, doing a full road season and then just jump back on the track and have that speed that you need and the intensity. And Yeah, I think it's, it's more difficult these days to do both, but I think it's healthy to do a little bit of both. But uh, one definitely has to be the priority over the other in order to win bike races these days. You need to have a very, very specific approach for those events that you want to do well at. Well, we see a lot of other combinations like uh, Pauline ferrand prevot for example. She has got four French national titles, both in the time trial and on the road, cyclocross and mountain biking. She is, of course, an exceptional talent. But look at Mayanna Vos being cyclocross and road race world champion. A lot of the uh, riders, like you said, doing both track and road racing. So um, yeah, it's something that you don't see a lot in men's racing, but you see a lot of women's racing that they are quite versatile riders. Yeah, absolutely. And you can take your specialisms from one discipline to the other, like doing your skill, skilled riding, for example, that you, that you learn in cyclocross. You can use it in a circuit-like race today. Well, I think somebody like Mariana Vos that has those cyclocross skills will find this race a little bit less taxing than other riders that are not so, so experienced with the technical side of things. So it definitely helps to, to go back to the, the cycle cross and to get a little bit in touch with using your skills in those moments. And uh, like I said, on a course like this, if you're more experienced and versatile, I think you're going to have a better chance of having more energy towards the finish. I think very kudo to her thoughts would be to get out there by myself early because if I'm in the peloton, I'm going to use too much energy thinking about the corners. Um, one of those riders that just likes to use brutal strength and... Uh, not really favouring the, the, the tactical side of it and the cornering and things like that. So being there out there in front is going to give her an advantage. She can just be calm and uh, not worry too much about those corners, get a free run into them. We've seen that she's taken most of the corners on the front so far. It sounds quite contrary because everybody knows that riding on your own or um, in a duo like this, it's much harder than riding in a peloton where you, where you lose less energy because she, you're just in the pack drafting along. Well, absolutely. I mean, for myself, I, I would, uh, I'd want to be in the peloton uh, out of the wind and I'd be very relaxed and saving energy. Whereas if I had to try and get out there like very kudoda, I wouldn't last very long at all. And that would be the end of my race after five minutes. So it is, um, you know, a little, a little bit different type of riders like different things. And we, we've seen many riders in the past, like Linton Van Morsel likes to be off the front or off the back, but not in the peloton. Is it, has it to do with being scared? Because being in a peloton can also be very daunting. For some people it is. For other people's, people it's, uh, it's quite relaxing and just to be in the peloton and uh, having a conversation or you know, just relax in the peloton. Whereas uh, for, for other riders it's, it can be very daunting. I know that uh, Wiggle Honda have the Japanese rider who's very new to the, the world of European cycling and having 150 women in the race is... Uh, yeah, so it's an extra challenge. You have to think about uh, if you have to be in the peloton and be worried about all the people around you, then uh, can use a lot of energy, and then you don't have that energy to put the uh, power through the pedals when it's uh, the most important time of the race. They're going back towards uh, the finish line. You can see the beautiful gantry that we have today. Nice uh, Swedish house, and then we're going to see what the current gap is. Um, reportedly, it's over a minute already for these two, where you can clearly see that Kudoda puts in the most effort. And at, um, at points, the Swedish rider really has to uh, dig deep just to keep the wheel. Yeah, we've seen at times that uh, it's been quite difficult to, to hold the wheel for the Swedish rider. She still comes through for, for short turns, just to say that, you know, if I'm, if I'm going to be here, I'll, I'll do what I can. But uh, like we said before, Vera knows this kind of situation when she's in a, she's out in front with an, another rider. She wants to use that rider as much as she can, but she, she knows she's a stronger rider, so she's willing to do the majority of work. And she's not the type of rider, Vera Kudota, to just sit up and say, well, if you're not going to work with me, I'm just going to sit up. She'll just keep riding. She's content to just do the work. And if it works out, at the end of the day, it works out. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. But she, uh, she gives herself a chance. So uh, one of the speed humps in the course. A little bit of a challenge for the riders as well, because in a peloton, speed humps uh, 
You can't see them. You can't see them coming. No, they just come up straight in front of you and you see riders you know, losing a little bit of control of their bikes. There's been a lot of discussion today about the tyre pressures because, as you said, the sun was out this morning. Uh, so some riders chose different tyres and then they had to change their decisions on their wheels and their tyres and the pressure. A lot of discussion between all the riders on all the teams and their mechanics before the start about the tyre pressures they'd run. And also, I find it amazing that athletes still find it very difficult to decide how much clothing they're going to wear on a day like today because there's been so many races throughout the year where it's, uh, it's going to rain and all the sun might come out, but it's uh, still a very tough decision for each of the riders to decide if they wear an undershirt or they don't, or they wear a vest, or they wear arm warmers, which materials. Uh, most of the, the teams now have jerseys all made out of different materials and different thicknesses, and you can see a lot of riders still have arm warmers and a vest on. We might see towards the, the end, even if it's raining very heavy, that the, uh, the vests come off. We can see them uh, coming into the finish straight, and the gap is over two minutes already. It's the biggest gap that we've seen so far in a World Cup race, and it's something that is quite uncommon for women's racing, that um, a breakaway gets that much of, a, of an advantage, because in the previous races, we haven't really seen um, a real breakaway. It's usually like 45 seconds, maybe 50, maybe one minute, but this is, uh, this is two minute two very very interesting that the peloton have let that go out so far because there are so many riders in the peloton and teams that want to win today and uh very kudo wouldn't have been one of the favorites but perhaps they've underestimated her strength which they shouldn't do but uh once the race gets going towards the end they're going to predict that these two riders get very tired out there in front and this is why the peloton may be a little bit relaxed because when they start racing and attacking each other and their, their directors have probably told them what the limit is and I would guess that it would be two minutes so we'll see it controlled now and uh, in the end it'll come back a little bit there's another three hours of racing coming here in Fogorda and uh, you're going to see all the action here on the UCI YouTube channel just like you can next week when we uh, head for the season finale in the World Cup in Plouet in France, which is always a very exciting but also a very difficult race to control. And you can also see that uh, live on the UCI YouTube channel. So great steps being made forward for women's racing. You, as being a women's cycling advocate, uh, Rochelle, this is really a great thing. Absolutely. I get excited about all races everywhere. And look, this is really starting to live up now. We've got Specialized. Looks like it could be Chantal Black. Chantal Black. And we've got uh, Michael Porsbull for Jane Shimano, the Belgian rider. Porsbull is in good form. Well, she had to uh, she had to leave the team um, after two kilometers in the team time trial. Two kilometers, and she was gone. It was not a mechanical thing, but she just she couldn't follow. Oh, this happens sometimes. You just have a bad day, but uh, those bad days are generally followed by good days. It's amazing how it works like that. You can just have no answers as to why, what happened. Uh, you can be in the best shape possible, but in a team time trial too, the shock of going out of the gun or going too fast at the start, and you lose that wheel just for one moment, and it's all over. It's not that you... I mean, she potentially could have been stronger towards the end of the race than other riders that were there. Um, after the two-kilometer mark, but uh, these type of things happen and from experience with myself I've actually finished dead last on a certain day in a certain race and the next day come out and win uh, In front of the likes of Ina, Ina Yoko Tutenberg and I think it's because you go away You know you, you can't find the answers and just something clicks inside you and uh, you get that little bit extra extra motivation to have a go and we might see that with possible she'll be very very disappointed with only making it two kilometers into the team time trial, but uh, yeah, getting out there and having a bit of a go today. Seems like we've got two chasers at the moment. With the motorbike already being there. There are very strict rules about the use of motorbike and cameras. And uh, the commissaire who's in the uh, first car in the convoy keeps a close eye on that. And uh, over the race radio, they can also um, communicate to the team directors to the convoy and uh, tell them what's permitted and not. And if um, a team driver or team director 
makes it really, really bad. They can even get um, a big fine. So this is interesting that you see a bowls rider coming across to this because we would have thought they won't chase because it's down to the likes of the Orica Green Edge team and Rubber Bank to chase, but bowls dominant. It looks like they're sending across Ellen Van Dyke. No, no that's Ellen there. Hurt. So it was another rider from the bowls team. Not sure if she was trying to go across or bring that back, but uh, but the pace is up now. The gap is down at uh, 20 seconds. It's 1:45 at the moment. And we've see, uh, we see these three riders joining forces in pursuit of Kudolder and Rutlund. It's, uh, it's going to be exciting. It's uh, Chantal Black, one of the, the only Dutch girls in the specialized Lula 11 team, and Paul Spool, and uh, Swedish rider Kasia Pavloska for Bulls Dolmans is the third rider identified in that uh, counter attack. But this is still uh, the Swedish um, on the Swedish team, Rudlund and uh, super strong Fira Kudoda. And um, just like you said, the two-minute point was probably the uh, the point where the team directors say we have to go and start chasing now. You can see here that's a little bit of a drag. It's um, it's never really flat. This race it doesn't uh, it doesn't include a real big amount of altitude meters, but it's dragging along the entire course. Every part of the course takes a lot of energy and um, concentration. It's just there's no time like you get uh, on roads in the Giro d'Italia where you can just cruise along in the peloton and be relaxed because every section that you get like that is only a couple of minutes long. So it's all about positioning. I want to get to the front for when these corners start again or I want to get to the front when the hill or I want to get to the front when we go through the finish. So the circuit keeps the race alive and there's no moment there to just relax. Well, we had a circuit race a few a few weeks back in Bochum, which was not as exciting as what we see here today. Well, this is a bit more challenging. It definitely is. It's more challenging. It's more technical for sure. So we'll see now that uh, the race is starting to live, liven up. We had these two riders go off very early, and they're going to try and stay out as long as they possibly can out in front. But there's a very good chance that we'll see that come come back maybe not all the way back but i think they want to get that a little bit more in check a little bit closer chasing group at um, 130 at the moment Kudoda, a really big woman. She is uh, well over one meter 80. I don't know what that makes in, uh, I think it's six foot something. She's really tall, which uh, means that she's got quite a big frame size. But even uh, despite her height, she has got beautiful posture on the bike. Here's the chasing group. And the rain starts plummeting down. Susanna Zorzi there for Astana. And we've got Paul Spool, Black, Pavlovska here. One rider for um, Estado de Mexico. Is it Rosella Ratter? No, it's um, Guiada Borgato. Pavlovska seems to be on quite a big gear here. Yeah, she doesn't That's look too, too comfortable, actually. She's moving around a little bit on the bike, but uh, obviously she had the, the mental energy to make sure she was in the move. I think we can see an Orica. Yeah, that's Amanda Spratt, the Australian rider for Orica AIS there. She's our better shots to uh, recognise. I think it's uh, actually Romy Kasper for Bulls Dolmans chasing there. She's really, really working on the bike. If you look at uh, Chantal Black, who has got a far more smooth pedaling style, but uh, in the background, you can see the peloton springing to life as well on top of the climb here. We've got a shot there before of the peloton. It looked like it could have been Mariana Voss driving. It is Mariana Voss driving the bunch. That's and interesting. She's doing some damage there. That is very, very interesting. She's taking up the work. She might be working for a teammate today. Cause that's, that's exactly what, is I, what I was thinking. And that makes uh, for very interesting theories, Rochelle, because uh, just like we discussed this morning, Annemiek van Floten is really, really strong at the moment. She's won this race before, but Anna van der Breggen, she is really the up-and-coming star. Well, and uh, she had a wonderful, fantastic uh, tour of Norway. When I woke up this morning, there's a shot that we can see. Mariana Voss is trying to make contact 
But what I was saying is, when I woke up this morning and I thought, if I was Mariana Voss, would I want to win today? Of course, she always wants to win, but the World Championships is just around the corner and she'll want as much support as she can get from her Dutch teammates. And it occurred to me that she may want to set this up for one of her teammates today because, like we said before, she's a very giving person and uh, the World Championships is always something that she really wants. And in order to get that, she needs to uh, play her part as well. And we've seen already now that she means business. Uh, for her teammates today. She's not afraid to put her nose in the wind and do a bit of work. So can other teams benefit from this situation where the strongest rider is being used up so early in the bike race? So to summarize, we have had an attack almost straight from the start by Swedish rider Malin Rutlund. Vera Kudoda bridged the cross on her own and they got a gap of two minutes and then Kudoda leaves the Swedish woman behind. We've seen before that the Dutch, the Dutch rider is uh, by far the strongest one and that Lutlund has had trouble before to keep the wheel of uh, the 31-year-old. In the background, there is a chasing group with um, Chantal Black, Michael Polspool, also Romy Kasper, Susanna Zorzi. We've seen uh, Giada Borgato for Estado de Mexico. And then Marianne Vos herself is pulling at the front of the peloton, being self selfless today, which is uh, going to be very exciting. She won the Bochum race, the Sparkas and Giro, three weeks ago, out sprinting Georgia Bronzini in a really beautiful sprint. And it all came down to that last corner three weeks ago where uh, she took the advantage. It was a really, really long sprint in Germany. And Bronzini, she, um, she had a really good sprint, but she missed out on a few centimeters only. Well, we can see the job that Mariana Voss has done. If she is still on the front, this is a chasing group in our view at the moment, but just behind them, Mariana Voss is on front on the front of the peloton. Looks like she's still the rider that's applying all the force to the peloton to bring back that chasing group. And if that is, that's an amazing job done by Mariana Voss. If she's still there on the front doing all of this work, she's a rider that can recover very quickly and that won't be the end of her. She's probably the only rider that can do that. Uh, the chase now for nearly half a lap to bring back the chasing group. The so peloton is uh, really strung out, if you can still call it a peloton, because if we can uh, get the cameras to the back of this group, you will see that a lot of riders are being dropped already under the furious pace that is being set by Mariana Vos herself, the world champion. This is Chantal Black. She was in the winning team for uh, Specialized Lululemon. She's uh, new to the team this year but she took up the team time trial skills perfectly. Well, that, that team, Specialized Lululemon, are, are known for being specialist in the team time trial, and they may have went out and recruited Chantal Black for that strength that she has to bring to the team. Obviously, uh, it strengthened their team, like we said. Their, their win at the World Cup was by a larger margin this year than it was in previous years. So going into the World Championships, they seem to have got it right. Six chasers at the moment. And the peloton seems to be losing a little bit more ground. Of course, uh, six riders together, as strong as these uh, these are, it's very hard for, uh, even if it's Mariana Vos, to get it, um, get it back. Cool. Zorzi here at the back, the former European champion. It's now um, Sabrina Stultins, who wears that uh, blue striped jersey. The pressure here is really on the rubber bank team because, like we said, they've come into this race as the strongest team in numbers and they have missed this move. And that's why we see so much cooperation from all of these riders doing turns because they know they're in a good situation when they've got a move without Mariana Voss or one of her teammates in it. So they're all doing equal turns and they'll be uh, being pressured by their directors via the race radios that they have in their ears to keep this going, to collaborate, to all work well together because it can't be a negative in any case because Rabobank have missed this and that will really put that team under pressure. So it's um, Borgato in pink, followed by Amanda Spratt, then Chantal Black. We have um, Romy Kasper, Mike Paulspool and Susanna Zorzi is going to be the last one in your screen. There she is in blue for Astana. So those are the six chasers where uh, Ridland made it back to um, Viracudoder. This is one of the most uh, difficult sections on the course. It's a um, sequence of two 
lovely speed bumps, but um, in the car it's even uh, horrible. And this is the last kilometre, you can see the uh, red flag there. A few corners in the last kilometre and the roads are really soaking wet when we are going to finish lap three here. And then we're going to see the actual time differences. Amanda Spratt, yeah, she was, um, she went down in a Tour of Flanders, if I recall correctly. Yeah. I think she broke a collarbone in that race. Yeah, she did a really good job to come back from that injury because she's back at her best. But uh, she's no stranger to injury because she spent two or three years in rehabilitation at the Australian Institute of Sport. And it was amazing that the Institute of Sport supported her for so long on an associate medical scholarship to get her back. They obviously saw the talent that she had as a young rider. And uh, she had that accident earlier in the season in Flanders with a broken collarbone, but she's come back extremely strong. But two years seems like a really awfully long time for, uh, for rehab. What, what, what kind of thing did she have? I think uh, it took them a long time to figure out what it was. A lot of tests and uh, operations. And then when you come back too early and you push it a little bit too soon, then you have another, another injury. But uh, nerve-related injuries and knee injuries and hip injuries in cycling, if they're not managed well or a rider doesn't know their body, and at a young age you can make those mistakes because you don't listen so much to your body and you, your mind kind of takes over and you can push it a little bit too far and just one thing leads to the other. But uh, she's come out of the other side a, a strong bike rider and a very reliable teammate for uh, Emmy Johansson today. She's in that move. She comes from a BMX background, actually, like myself, Amanda Spratt, uh, in Sydney there. You can see that the group is uh, being reined back again. The group with uh, Borgato, Lack, Kasper, Spratt, Zorzi and Michael Paulsbull. And uh, the gap has diminished tremendously because they're already in the last 300 metres and I've got my clock at 30 seconds at the moment. So I already wondered there were no team cars behind uh, Kudoder and Riedlund, which indicates that the gap is below 130 or even one minute. And they are coming to uh, the finish line here. Trying to uh, clean her um, specs here. Claudia Lichtenberg. The second wheel there is Linda Willemsen. And it's um, 55 seconds at the moment. So from two minutes and two seconds, they've brought it down to uh, 55 seconds only. That is uh, quite incredible work in uh, one lap only. Well, I think the peloton will take confidence from, from that and realise that they don't need to do a specific chase for those two out in front. They can continue to race each other in the peloton and hope that naturally those two in front come back when this, this racing heats up again. You see a lot of riders who are already in trouble. It's one of the most exciting races, this uh, World Cup in Sweden, because it is so unpredictable. And uh, we have the wet weather here that makes it a little bit more technical. Here we can see Sara Mustonen is um, the rider for Giant Shimano and not Lichtenberg. And you can see all the names on your screen now as they pass the finish line after three laps. So 33 kilometers into this race. That means 99k to go. the car from the Commissaire following the riders. The Commissaire's car is always the last one to leave the breakaway. This is um, a bridge over the railroad and uh, it comes straight after a right-hand turn so you have to keep, uh, you have to keep your speed to get up it um, quite fast and in the back uh, they're struggling. Seems like uh, Florky Mackay here for uh, Giant Shimano. Just talking about those cars, Yosi, uh, the men's racing normally has two team cars uh, following the race. The women have one team car each. They can put their hand up at any time. See the rider on the back there was Lottie Becker. Looks like she's going to put her hand up. 
from the Wiggle Honda team and go back to the race car to get some instruction or to maybe let the director know if uh, the radio communication is not good or something like that, they'll go back to the car and have a quick conversation with the race director. So when they put their hand up at the back of the peloton, their race car can come right up next to them and have a conversation through the window. They can get some drinks now. I think feeding's open after the first lap. And again, Kudoda is um, faster, stronger than uh, Riedlund. Well, Riedlund's done a, a very good job to stay that long with Riri Kudoda. Not many people can hold her wheel. It's not an easy wheel to hold. After a little while, it becomes quite taxing. And she doesn't slow down. She holds the same pace. She just keeps on going. And after each of the turns, Riedlund has to really dig deep to get back to Kudoda. Very small bridge here which is okay if you're alone or with two. But if you're a peloton at full speed, it's going to be a little bit tricky. And Ritland tries really hard again to get back to the Dutch rider. And um, she might as well make it again. But you can imagine that it takes out a lot of energy for Ritland. Well, Vuru Kudo, she had a blocked artery in 2004, 2005. That's a very, very common uh, injury for a cyclist. It affected her cycling, but she uh, turned her focus to her studies in sports marketing and communication. So many of these riders are, are studying at the same time as they're cycling or doing part-time study so they can give their full attention to their cycling careers while still uh, furthering their education. Like you said, a blocked iliac uh, artery is quite a common um, cycling injury. It also takes a long time to, uh, to get to rehab re rehabilitate from it. It means that the blood flow to your leg is being compromised, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I think it, um, from what I've heard, it takes a long time to identify for a lot of athletes as well. They have a, a lack of power or a numbness in one leg, and uh, unless they've spoken to a lot of people about their problems, it takes them a while to, to know that they need to go and have some tests. And We've heard that uh, riders that have had this blocked artery uh, released have come back stronger than ever, not knowing that they've been restricted and wondering why they're, you know, most of the power is going through one leg, but uh, some athletes are unable to I identify that that's uh, an issue that they have. Um, and, yeah, once uh, that, that procedure takes place and they identify it and, and correct it, it takes a while uh, for rehab to come back, uh, I think. It's also Enemy quite ben a Luton was also exactly. It also is quite a risky operation as well. You can have uh, complications from it. But uh, Van Vluten is one. Van Vluten is one of these um, athletes that came back stronger. Of course, she won the Tour of Flanders before she had the injury uh, last winter. But she won the time tri time trial national title, beating Ellen van Dijk, which is no mean feat. Absolutely, and I think uh, she's she's one to say that uh, that surgery that she had. Uh, you know, it made her feel like she had two legs again rather than one. And winning the national championship this year in the, the time trial was probably not a surprise to her. She knew she was capable of it, but uh, given her a lot of ambition and hope back for Rio Olympics, she'll target that now in the individual time trial. Can Kudoda recover a little when she's in, on the wheel of this uh, Swedish rider? Yeah, we saw she just uh, sat up onto the top of her handlebars and she can get out of the wind and take a few deep breaths and take a little bit of pressure off the legs. But uh, she's getting only help from the other rider when the road is going a little bit uphill, so therefore she gets a little bit less. Just like you said, now we can see the team car with uh, Martin Fesbu, the uh, partner of Emma Johansson, coming up to uh, Riedlund to uh, di discuss what's going on. Well, he's done a great job. I mean, he, the directors do have to take some credit when the tactics have been right. And he went on the uh, aggressive path right from the start. There we see Martin through the window. So he's a fantastic tactician and uh, the head coach of the Swedish national team. And he has a very strong reputation of uh, being able to read a race very well and uh, getting the most out of his team. And he certainly has today. That little talk that he had with the rider would have motivated her to get over this hill. And he would have chosen that time when he went up to talk to her because he would know that this is the lap that she's going to struggle to hang on. And he just wants her to just get over one more time. He would have went to her and he would have said, okay, just fight really deep. Everything you've got to get over the climb this one more time because it's very likely in the next few laps they're going to be caught. But he wants her to just try and stay there for experience, just to know where her limits are for, for, for the future. You see Kudoda, she's in a rhythm there. 
One five is the gap at the moment. One minute and five seconds for Kudoder in the first wheel and uh, Rutlund following her in the Swedish national colours. She was uh, third in the national championships on the time trial, Rutland was, where uh, Emma Johansson won it. She was one minute and six seconds slower than the Swedish champion. And Johansson, of course, also won the road race. And that's where Rutland was second ahead of uh, Giant Shimano's Mustonen and Wiggle Handers Emilia Farlin. And these girls, they ride on uh, other teams, for example. Alexandra Nesmar, who is on the Swedish team, she normally writes for the Firefighters Uppsala cycling team, which is um, who's not who are not present here because they're not a UCI team. Lizzie Armitstead, comfortable at the front there, and then Emilia Farlin for Wiggle Honda, racing on home ground today. She'll be feeling a little bit of pressure. She's got a lead rider in there, Georgia Bronzini, a sprinter, and also Linda Willemsen. So a lot of weight on the shoulders of Emilia Farlin racing at home in front of a Swedish crowd. All the family come and come and watch the race. Yeah, same goes for some of the riders for high tech, for example. Sara Olsson, she's here, the Swedish rider. And Oka Emily Moberg has a home race today. One hour of racing done here in Vogoda, and we've seen some exciting stuff already by this uh, women's peloton. Still two leaders, Vera Kudoder and uh, Marlin Rutlund. We've seen some counter-attacks with all the big teams there, except for Rabobank Liv. And then Mayana Vos herself pulled the peloton back to uh, within reach of the six chasers, and they... Uh, they put the uh, distance between them and Kudoder and Rutlund in half. It's one minute at the moment. These two had a maximum lead of two minutes. And now we can see the great helicopter shots and uh, maybe we can pick up the peloton there. And the Park Hotel girls here. And the Dutch continental teams from uh, Valkenburg, which is, uh, of course, very well known as the finish place for the Amstel Gold race and the World Championships in 2012, where um, Mayana Vos won the title, as well as uh, Lucy Garner. She's not here today, Lucy. She has a different racing schedule, but uh, Giant Shimano, just like uh, Rabobank, have a very strong team to pick their riders from. And with Amy Peters and Kirsten Wilt, they have two strong sprinters here. Peters already been on the podium before, just like Wilt, who won this race in uh, 2010. Well, they've proven to be a very strong duo this year. Kirsten Wield and Amy Peters. Amy Peters third here last year, so she'll be confident about that this course. And I think that's the thing with, with uh, most sports, and the cycling specifically, when you've done well on a course, on a certain circuit, when you come back, you have that mental edge that, well, I can do this, this is my circuit, I'm good at this, I'm good on this circuit. So. Amy Peters will know that uh, she's capable of being at the business end of the bike race with the leaders and able to do something today, whether it's for Kirsten Wield or for, her, for herself. I think she'll have a lot of confidence uh, in today's race. Vera Kudoda still on the, on the front working. She's won 40 national championship medals. So that's uh, an amazing uh, accomplishment across uh, track and uh, road racing. But uh, the majority of those would be on the track. 40 national championship medals. She's won a World World Cup on the track also back in 2009. On the um, 2006, actually, it was the scratch race uh, in Sydney, World Cup. So she's got uh, quite a. I mean, I don't think her palm ears really justify 
how much she's achieved in the sport because she's the aggressor of the races. She's the attacker. She's always out there in front. So you don't necessarily always see her name on the results. But uh, today it's most likely that you won't see her name on the results, but she's made the race. She makes, it, makes the race every time she, she goes into it. And uh, the attacking style is... Uh, she, she's definitely one of the stronger, stronger bike riders in the peloton. Yeah, she won a stage um, in that same manner in a solo attack in the Enschivach Tour. That was uh, all the way back in, uh, in April. And uh, she did it as well last year in the Lotto Cycling Cup. It's her way of riding, attacking, attacking, and doing long solo breakaways. It's something that you have to be able to do because you have to pace yourself. You have to put yourself into so much pain and you can't just follow the draft of the peloton. It's, it's very much a mental thing as well, isn't it? Absolutely. And it's amazing because, like we said earlier, when Vera Kudo to left this peloton and went off the front, it's not that people let her move off the front. It's that they can't go with that consistent power that she has. She has a lot of power. They can only hope the peloton that she will tire because she will be spending all that energy out there in front. But she's no stranger to pain, that's for sure. And only, there's only a certain amount of riders that can actually put themselves through that much pain every time they get on the bike. And uh, Vera Kudo often has that that mentality that she wants to go out there and just hurt herself. Uh, she doesn't think about the results. She knows that sometimes they'll come, sometimes they won't. But uh, she's not scared of pain, that's for sure. What makes it all the more, more beautiful if she wins a race in her attacking fashion and she can be uh, on top of the podium for once. The peloton is um, a bit smaller than the one that we uh, started with. A lot of the riders um, who are um, not having a fantastic day today are already being dropped. We've seen Lottie Becker there. She's spending a lot of time on the back of the peloton today. That could be due to nerves. Uh, had a few hard tumbles in the past, and that uh, obviously makes you a little bit more aware of what could happen and it is that time of year where you're coming into the world championships which is an important race for all riders Lossie becker will want to represent germany at the world championships so that's in the back of some riders minds that are a little bit nervous about the wet weather and not so confident in their equipment we also see the uh, croatian champion mia radotic she is one of the um eight national uh, champions we have here in this race of course gracie elfin is here for orica ais we've got jacqueline han for the bigler team she's the austrian national champion lotte lapisto we've seen her the finnish champion then uh, for japan mayuko hagiwara for wiggle honda the swedish national champion of course she's here emma johansson as is lisa brenauer for uh, specialized we've seen her the german champion and elina cecchini for Estado de Mexico is the Italian champion and I'm one short and that's Lissi Rist and she is in the Estonian national team. So that's the uh, national champions there, the lovely checkered shirt here for the Croatian champion with 124. All the way at the back here and these are our two leaders making their way back to the finish line and you can see in the puddles that it's raining again or still whatever you prefer. Well, we've had wet roads right from the start, haven't we? We've had little spells of uh, dryness, but I think the riders won't notice the rain now that it's been raining so 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 often. You kind of, you think about a little bit at the start and cold, but once the body warms up, you tend to start thinking about other things in the race and less about the conditions. And these are the champions of the future. It's always nice to see uh, young girls watching this race and maybe take inspiration from the races they see here. We saw that at the um, UK Women's Tour as well. And most of these riders are great ambassadors for their sport. They take out time to talk to young girls. And um, they also take time to, uh, to go to cycling clubs, tell of their experiences, and uh, which makes them great role models and makes them uh, also great um, inspiration for young racers taking up cycling now. They don't need a male ro role model. They can, they can take the likes of Emma Johansson or Mariana Voss or Lisa Brenau or whoever you want to pick. Well, they certainly are fantastic role models and I think there's been a bit of a mental switch within the peloton that the, the female athletes, uh, they're not playing chicken and egg now with the, the media and the TV coverage. They've taken it into their own hands and said, OK, we want to uh, deliver our sport to our fans and our followers and they're giving a, a lot back to the sport uh, to inspire young people and for the next generation. I think there's some really wonderful things being done in our sport at the moment. 
and uh, in turn the uh, the media coverage is coming and the TV live TV coverage of some of the races and I think it's a very exciting time and uh, women's cycling is moving forward in leaps and bounds. Amy Peters there on the right next to Susanna Zorzi. And then the pack just falls in back together. Still the same names at the front. Lizzie Amstead keeps herself out of trouble there on the left side of the road. And the gap is back up again, Rochelle. It's almost two minutes again, but just like you told me, they take confidence from knowing that they can quite easily close that gap again. That's right. We saw one of the laps previously where the race started to heat up and uh, broke up a little bit. There was uh, quite a few moves from some of the riders and the the breakaway naturally came back to one minute. But like I said, I, I'm pretty sure there'll be that golden marker of two minutes where the team directors say, OK, the break's gone out to two minutes. So let's liven this up a bit, bring it back in. And someone needs to do something. So I think two minutes, we won't see you go out much further than that. But uh, we can see the peloton are very, very relaxed at the moment. This lap sees the first of the two mountain sprints. And uh, since we still have got two leaders with uh, Marlin Rudlund and Vera Kudoder, it's not likely that um, Anna van der Breggen, who we see there next to uh, the rider for Astana B. Pink, Alisa Algisi. It's not very likely that she's going to pick up some points. Just like team director for Rabuliv said, Koos Moederhout, those uh, secondary classifications are not a big issue for us. We want the win today. And uh, they've got several candidates at the Dutch team to do so. And I think the most likely candidate today will be Anna van der Breggen. This is the way they cross the line with uh, Cecilia Johnson, Chantal Blaak, Pavlovska, Romy Kasper, Miriam Björnsrud, Giorgio Bronzini and Emma Johansson, Rosella Rato, Amy Peters, Zorzi and then Van Dijk and you can see all the names. Catherine Garfoot, she's quite an interesting rider, Rochelle. She um, turned pro only a few months ago and she's done really, really great so far. Absolutely. The Australian summer is where she made her mark. Born in Germany, but uh, now represented Australia recently at the Commonwealth Games, where she picked up a bronze medal. Very uh, um, absolutely unheard of one year ago, Katrin Garfoot, but uh, now riding professionally for Orica AIS and uh, a very strong rider, extremely strong in the hills. So I think a really, a really good addition to the team for li the likes of Emmy Johansson today. I think she'll be confident that she has that extra additional strength in the team. And we could see she was all the way up the front there, quite close to Emma Johansson protecting her team leader. What what does protecting a team leader actually mean in a race? Of course, the team director says, you stay with Emma today. So what, what would your role be if you have to stay with the team leader? If it is Katrin Garfoot's role today to stay with Emma Johansson, that will mean that if a rider like Voss or one of Voss's teammates does an attack, a strong attack on the climb, Katrin Garfoot will have to take Emmy Johansson, push the wind for her while she can relax on the wheel and close that gap at the speed that Emmy Johansson wants her to do it at. So it's like having a, a pace car in front of you. You have that pace motor in front of you and you say, OK, I don't want to explosively kick to chase Mariana Voss, but just pick up the pace and close that gap for me and I'll stay in the slipstream out of the wind and I'll have to put a little bit less pressure through the pedals and I can save. And when you get close enough, I might jump across. So to have that, that uh, ally, Katrin Garfoot, just, you know, by her side, she needs to use her up, she can. So... And that makes cycling a team sport because everybody in the six women's team has their own role. Well, that's right. If Katrin Garfoot does that job, job and then she is dropped off the back of the peloton and uh, she rolls in and she stops a lap or two before the finish, she will still have done her job and she'll feel when, when Emmy Johansson wins that I've done my job today. Uh, so it, it is very much a team sport. And but it also makes it difficult because if you're looking for a team, you actually don't have any results to show for. Well, I think the other teams actually recognize your strength as a domestique or a helper. And if Katrin Garfoot's looking for a contract for next year and she was to play that role, for example, for Emmy Johansson, and she did it successfully and pulled out, the other team managers will still see the value in her um, for, for a team leader perhaps on their team. So. 
that's how it works. I mean, it's a little bit difficult to comprehend that uh, you don't need to have results, any results, in fact, to be a very, very valuable rider that was offered a, a lucrative salary on a, a team. It's all about how you do your job or what you're best suited for. We see a counter-attack from uh, one of the Ross Velo riders. And you can see Crescent, which is uh, the main sponsor of this event, as we go um, out of Fogorda on our way to uh, the first mountain sprint of today. The leader of the mountain classification is Belarusian champion Alena Amielusik, but she's out training in Italy with her Astana B Pink team. And uh, hopefully we'll see her next week to um, take that jersey home for the, um, for the team in Plouet. It's great to see sponsors uh, take an interest in women's racing and Crescent, which is a bike brand. They do that very well here in Sweden. Our two leaders, the gap is uh, around two minutes at the moment as they uh, head their uh, way to the climb, which is about 500 meters. It's reportedly at 8%, uh, but I think it's a little bit less than that. It's, uh, it's quite a gradual drag up up the mountain. It's not 8%, but uh, that's what the road book indicates. I think it's more like uh, 5, 6 at max. It certainly took the pinch out of my legs when I rode this World Cup. It felt like it was a, a significant climb after the first couple. The first time you do it, the second time you do it, okay, it doesn't feel like much. But uh, after the third or four, fourth lap, you have to mentally switch on and think, okay, right, okay, need to get to the top of this climb. And... It's just that bit over the top that's really difficult as well because well, you the line is and then the climb continues a little bit. Yeah, I think so that's you what think makes you're there, yeah. but you're not. You can see the top, but when you get to the top, you're not quite at the top. So that's probably the most difficult thing. And uh, like we said, it doesn't look like much and it doesn't feel like much on the first couple of times up it. But uh, in a race like this where you need to stay concentrated for the whole lap, uh, it does become quite a, a challenge each lap. And it's definitely where the race is, is going to be made here. Well, the great thing is, in the last lap, we saw the Swedish director, uh, Martin Vesbu, ride up to uh, Ridlund, encouraging her to keep the wheel off Vera Kudoder. And she's still there, the Swedish rider, which is uh, pretty pretty nice for her. She was the one initiating this break. And here you can see the Swanjörg, as you can see the team cars lining up. It's time to uh, to give out some bottles. What, what kind of thing would the riders drink here? Just plain water? No, I was having a look at some of the bikes at the start and there was a lot of colours in the bottles, in the clear bottles. You could see a lot of different flavours in different riders' uh, are bottles. So I think they do have some energy and I think that's because it's very difficult on this course to eat because it's so technical around the back there. And uh, then obviously on the climb you don't want to take a mouthful of food. So I think they're, the riders are using uh, energy in their bottles, different types of uh, energy and sports drinks. This is lap five, and uh, there's a crowd out there for the riders, and it's uh, Kudoda picking up six points, with Rutland picking up four points. Let's see what uh, Kudoda can do for this um, classification. The leader is, uh, as I mentioned before, Amia Lusik. She has got uh, 12 points only, and there's 12 points up for grabs today. So maybe Kudoda can even go for that jersey. That would be a great reward for the work she's done today. Absolutely. I'm sure she hasn't had that in the back of her mind, but the uh, director might make her aware of that. And if she can stay out there again, then she may pick up some more points. The next Maybe. mountain sprint will be four laps from now, so it's still a long way to go. Yeah, it's, I think it's a difficult task, but it is possible. It depends how long the peloton wait till they, till they start racing. And that was something that she probably wouldn't have thought this morning, that she might go up for a mountain jersey having uh, the frame that she has. She's quite a big rider. She's got um, no points in that uh, classification at all. So she's now at six, which um, brings her at seventh position at the moment. Amir Lusik has 12. Ferrand Prevot, Molman, Pouli and Armistead both have 10. Then come Van der Breggen, Sarah Olsen, so Roxanne Kneteman and Ellen van Dijk. And it looks like there's even some sun out there. Crazy times. We've got a little counter-attack from the Ross Velo rider. This Race radio says it's uh, Chulkova. And this is the section where we said it looks like you're at the top when the riders come over this little bit. They take a bottle, but they've still got to climb a little bit more. 
And that's when the attacks start happening just over the, happening just over the top. So, you know, on a hot day, these feeds get a little bit desperate and all the riders are fighting to get to that side of the road for the bottles. But uh, in this kind of weather, it doesn't look like there's that many riders yet wanting to take a bottle. And that some of the riders actually only take one bottle today because this climb, they feel that they want to be as light as possible. So they take one bottle and uh, they'll does throw... The, does the 500 grams that they take really make a difference or is it a mental thing? Oh, it's definitely uh, a, a little bit of both, probably more mental than, uh, than uh, the physical benefits that you get of having the, the less weight. But, you know, riders are dieting all the time, so then they need to look at their bikes and try and, you know, get get the weight down as much as possible and it's just a feeling that okay we've done everything we possibly can to get uh, in the lightest condition which means less power we have to put through the pedals to get up that slight rise 150 and after the turn which uh, Kudoda takes easier than the Swedish rider Rudlund Rudlund has to dig deep again as she's done so many times before just to keep the wheel and I haven't seen a takeover no, for she's a long time. She's just managing to hold on. Vera might ask her to go to the front now because we just saw Vera took some food from her pocket. She's probably going to have something to eat at this point. She might like to just sit, sit behind for a little bit. It's difficult when you take an energy bar or a small sandwich or something to eat on the bike and need to breathe at the same time. So it's, uh, it's nice to get out of the wind and just take a little bit of a break when you're trying to consume that energy through food. So the first mountain sprint of the day, Vera Kudoder takes six points, Rutlund takes four, and then the counter-attack from Resvelo, Chulkova takes two points. So um, at the moment, virtual leader is still Amia Lusik. The next uh, event, as you may call it, we're going to have is two laps from now. It's going to be the intermediate sprint, that uh, classification being led by Iris Sloppendel. And though she is a former winner here of this race, she's not in the team for Rabo Live, and that exactly shows how strong the team is if they can leave her behind. Absolutely. Uh, having one in fine style, actually in good form this year, Irish Slappendale. She's been consistently on form. She won a race, um, I think it was even last week in um, Route de France. She won a stage there. That's right, and also being a, a key player and setting up win wins throughout the season for her teammates. Uh, but it is, like we said, it is one of the strongest teams here today. So, And uh, we, we pointed out earlier that making a team of six for a World Cup is not easy. You know, it's the fight to get on the start line, to be in condition and be selected by your, your team managers. To be on the start line at a World Cup is, is not an easy thing these days. The level and the competition is very, very high. So it's prestigious to be able to just come and line up. So they're getting a time check there from the board. In case they don't have radio communication or they're not getting the messages, they can get the information from the whiteboard that was just shown by the motorbike, uh, how, how big the gap is. And that can sometimes give you a little bit extra motivation as well. Back to uh, Vogorda, which is uh, a lovely little town here in Sweden. We're about um, 60 kilometers northwest of Gothenburg, and uh, that's also the airline the riders took. Here we see uh, Chukova, the uh, counter-attacker. It's uh, quite a rural area, as you can see here, a lot of agriculture, but uh, today it's home to the fastest women on wheels. And she takes them some food, some uh, some gels, which are really rich in sugar, mostly. Well, you see that she just squeezed it in one mouthful, so it's in quite easy, quite fast. It can be taken up by the body uh, a little bit quicker than food, so... She's doing it the hard way, obviously, stuck between the breakaway and the peloton. It's not a nice place to be unless you're uh, motoring across, but Vera Kudoda... She's not a strong rider to uh, to reach so easily. Rosvelo is uh, one of the Russian teams. They also have a, a men's team. It's a big Russian cycling project, actually, with uh, the Katusha team, the men's professional uh, World Tour team as well. A lot of money going into there from the government, a lot of gas and oil money into uh, the global Russian cycling project. And Rosvelo is one of those teams. They are um, 
Normally quite strong track riders, both the men and the women. The men's team is exact, actually made to uh, accommodate the Russian track riders to do a little bit of a road program. They're doing quite well as well for the men and the women, though the women don't have the results to, uh, to show for it. But they make the race at the moment. Nice Colnago cool bikes, Italian bike brand. Same bikes that uh, Wiggle Honda rides. It's um, an Italian bike brand is usually quite um, quite um, small, isn't it, in, in terms of geometry for riders. If you're a really bulky rider, Italian bikes are normally not your thing. But they are. They're a little bit petite. They're very, they're very. I mean, the Italian brands are so prestigious, aren't they? They're uh, they're normally little family businesses compared to the American type uh, companies that make bikes, but uh, we see it there in the picture. The Colnago, known as the Ferrari of cycling, and they actually have a Ferrari bike that Giorgio Bronzini rides. So uh, that sounds fast. Uh, Ferrari <laughs> bike. It does. It sounds. <laughs> but very it's still fast. pedal powered, isn't it? Yeah. It, it's no secret engines. It's no secrets there. But uh, yeah, they're very uh, prestigious brands. The Italian frames and componentry, Campagnolo. Well, Rochelle, it's getting actually quite hard to see my screen at the moment because we see something in the sky that resembles sunshine. <laughs> Blue skies. I feel like I'm in Australia. Well, you were in Australia. Yesterday I was, <laughs> yes. It was beautiful blue skies, I must say. Up to the finish line for Kuroder and for Rudlund, who does a stellar job just keeping the wheel of the Dutch woman. It's no mean feat to be doing that because she's been um, on the verge of losing the wheel of Kuroder many, many times. And it takes, if, if you're a bike rider yourself, you know that it takes twice the energy to ride back to somebody's wheel than it is to, uh, to, to stay on the wheel. So she does a really, really amazing job she does at the moment. I think it's great to see that very Kuroder, she's not fade. She knows that this rider's in trouble and she knows that the rider had good will to do, do some turns. So Vera's just getting on with the job. If she can get any help at any point from the Swedish rider, she knows that she will. But uh, at the moment, she's, she's happy and motivated by having that little bit of company with her. Yeah, the weather has been really off and on uh, the past few days. Sometimes you get really bright sunshine here and you think, oh, I'm going to sit outside and enjoy my coffee. And then two minutes later, it's plummeting the hungry rain again. And that makes it harder because uh, once you dry up and then have rain again and you cool down again, you dry up and then you have rain again, sometimes it's easier just to have constant rain. Yeah, I think also it uh, presents a few challenges with punches because with the wet roads and then the dry roads, it tends to pick up the little debris on the road a lot easier and uh, we might see a couple of punches given that some of the, the roads are wet and then dry. It's probably the worst conditions you can possibly have for getting a puncher. But like you said, it's been raining here for quite some weeks, so a lot of the debris has been uh, washed off the road and hopefully there won't be so many punches out there today. But uh, yeah, we see now the sun shining. So remember, if you're watching us on YouTube at the moment, do not hesitate to uh, send us some questions through Twitter. You can use the UCI Women's Cycling handle and we'll see your uh, questions appear here on the screen. So whatever you want to know about women's cycling, I'm sure Rochelle knows the answer. So uh, don't hesitate to ask the questions. Use uh, at UCI Women's Cycling. We can see that Chukova has 1.47 on um, Kudoder and Rutland, and then the peloton comes with um, some high-tech riders. Bulls Dolmans is quite there, and Lizzie Armistead still very well at the front of the peloton, just uh, keeping herself out of trouble. Well, Yosi, I think we might see some arm warmers coming off soon. <laughs> Being <laughs> very opportunistic. A little bit of heat in that sun, and we're getting closer to the business end of the bike race. Two forty-three at the moment, so uh, the peloton needs to spring into action to uh, not let Kudoda and Rudland get too much way. Here the Japanese champion going through um, on your screen. Really amazing.
amazing. Track cycling is really popular in Japan. Kairin races, of course, originate from uh, Japan. But you don't see many road races. And um, this year in the Giro d'Italia, the Giro Donne, uh, you are ahead of first podium place, which was uh, really a big thing for her. Wasn't that as inspiring to see a Japanese finish on a hilltop finish third at the Giro d'Italia? No one would have predicted that a couple of years ago, but uh, Mayuko Hagiwara came to Europe not speaking one word of English with a translator, but uh, she's come a long way in the, the last couple of years, and who would have thought she'd be on the podium? You can see that uh, Garfoot is the one uh, at the front of the peloton for Orica AAS, also Florci Makai, the rider with the beautiful curls um, for Giant Shimano. So those are our two leaders, Rudland Kudoda. You see uh, the team car, the blue team car for the Swedish national team following the Commissaire's car. Well, as we go through this um, lovely patch in Fogoda, which is not that big. Just one shopping street, basically. And a lot of farms around here with uh, cows. This is the most technical section here of the course. Some rights and lefts. When there's two riders, it's not as technical, but when you're in a peloton, it's a little bit more difficult. Little narrow bridge there, right hand corner. They come up, they get speed bumps as well through this section. And if you're in the peloton and you're about tw 20 or 30 riders back and it strings out, you have to work a little bit more to get back into the peloton and into the bunch protected after you get through this section. One and a half hours of racing done. And they've been at the front for at least one hour and 15 minutes of that, if not a little bit longer. You can see it's uh, quite a big frame she's got there for um, BMC. BMC Bikes, the uh, Swiss bike brand. She's got at least a 56 there, if you say, um, in terms of uh, frame sizes. She's, she's quite tall. Cool daughter it is. I had uh, Caroline Stewart on Twitter telling me exactly what it was in inches. Five foot eleven, she says. So it's uh, it's about 180, 182. She is at uh, in metric sizes. She's now with the Bigler team. Her first year there. It's also the team where Emma Pooley rode last year, but uh, they were not a UCI women's cycling team in that year. Pulley recently retired with uh, two podium places in the Commonwealth Games, and uh, she's gonna. She's not gonna sit back and kick up her feet. She's gonna do triathlons and marathons, and just a really amazing athlete to oh, see. I felt very emotional uh, at the Commonwealth Games when she finished second to Lizzie Armitstead uh, on her last road race, professional road race that she would ever do, because she is at the top of her sport right now. She's always been. A phenomenal bike rider. She has a huge list of palmares to her name. But uh, in the Giro d'Italia, that was uh, what she did there was absolutely amazing. Three stages she won there, three um, mountain stages. She's so incredibly strong. But she also has the um, discussion about women's racing and earning money. And she's very, uh, she's a very intelligent woman. She holds a, holds a PhD degree in uh, engineering. And she's, uh, she's a very good advocate for women's racing. And we've come a long way, but for uh, Pooley, it's been enough, she said. And she had a, a nice few months at the Lotto Bellisol ladies team and got, got them uh, three stage wins in a Giro. Amazing. Well, dark clouds again as we watch uh, Chulkova for the Rosvelo team. She is... Um, Anastasia Chulkova, you don't get a more Russian name than Anastasia. And here, this is the peloton with uh, Radotic there, the Croatian champion, and all the main teams at the front. We have seen uh, Mayana Vos for a few minutes, but now she's safely back in the bunch, saving some energy. And uh, they'll call her out again when, she, when they need her, probably. Well, it's going to be interesting to see what happens today with Lizzie Armitstead and Emmy Johansson and the Rabobank team. Obviously, Lizzie Armitstead's got a very handy lead on the World Cup Series. Emmy Johansson wanting to win today. 
three times on the podium here, two times second, two times third and one time second. Wanting to win, stand on the top. We saw in Spa Cars and Emmy Johansson took a chance. Uh, we don't see very often. They say that uh, Emmy Johansson races a little bit conservative sometimes, but at the Spa Cars and World Cup, she went for the win. Uh, she sacrificed the chance of finish second or third or fourth in the sprint as she normally does in a, a big peloton sprint, but uh, she took her chance for the win. On the last lap, she went out there by herself and broke away. And uh, unfortunately, she didn't make it to the line first. Well, Johansson beat Mayana Voss once this, t this year in uh, the UK Women's Tour in the first stage. She did quite a dragging finish there in Northampton. And uh, Mayana Voss timed her sprint wrong, but Emma Johansson was really strong that day. And uh, she took the first leader's jersey. In the end, Mayanovo set things straight and she won the race in the end, including uh, three stages to her name. Very good Odo's thrown off her arm warmers, as we said. You might see that happen. It's not likely that she's going to get cold anytime soon with all the hard work she's doing on the front. She's not had any help recently from the Swedish rider, so she's just got into a rhythm and realized that uh, she's not going to get any help here. Yeah, if we look at the history of this race, we have the first winner sitting next to us doing the commentary for the Swedish television. It's uh, multiple world champion Susanna Ljungskog. She won this race in 2006. Then in 2007, it was Chantal Beltmont, and uh, she was part of a two-woman breakaway. The year after that, we had an American winner in 2008 in Corey Kelly Seahaver and also she was part of a two woman breakaway. Absolutely that was the year I was here riding on the same team as Corey uh, so it was a very satisfying day for our team to have Corey. She probably wasn't one of the favorites and uh, but we knew that she was certainly very very strong but uh, a two woman breakaway with Kimberly Anderson who ran second and Charlotte Becker who's in this race today riding for Wiggle Honda. She was third on that occasion and she was riding for the Nuremberger team. 2.45 is the gap that Kudo and Rutland have at the moment. So um, a two-woman breakaway, but we have never seen one from the start. If we look at uh, 2009, it's the first time we see Emma Johansson on the podium. She was third then after two, behind two Dutch riders, Marianne Vos and Kirsten Wilt. And the year after that, Kirsten Wilt wanted to set things straight because she was beaten in the sprint by uh, Marianne Vos, who was still quite young that year in 2009. And the year after, Kirsten Bild won it for the Cervelo team. And uh, Johansson came in third again with um, three, with um, five Dutch riders in the top seven. Very strong um, country here on this race. It's a very hard race. In 2011, we had a Dutch winner again in Annemiek van Vleuten. She's here, here, here also. Ellen van Dijk was second and Nicole Cook. One of the great British cyclists of all time came in uh, third. And then 2012, to uh, finish up this uh, sequence, it was Iris Schlappendel for Rabobank ahead of uh, Hanka Kumpfernagel and Marianne Vos was on the podium. And last year, of course, it was Marianne Vos. Here we see um, a break, a counter-attack with uh, Lucinda Brandt in the last wheel for Rabobank going to have to take a closer look at that to identify all the riders in that breakaway. But um, yeah, the gap is well over two minutes at the moment. Almost three minutes at the moment. 2.52. They need to start doing something. Well, we were wrong about that two minute cap uh, that we said the, the bunch is going to start racing if they get more than two minutes up the road. But uh, like we said, the peloton, when they did race, they brought it down to one minute. So maybe they were confident that when we start racing again, we're going to bring it back pretty quick. But uh, letting that go out to two, over nearly three minutes, it's a dangerous break. But uh, we see now that there's some chases. So the race is firing up a little bit. And I don't think they can leave it any later than this, to be honest. They need to uh, take the race back into their own hands and get a little bit of control over this breakaway. We're about halfway at the moment. So uh, yes, it's time to take some action. We're in lap number six. 
You can never underestimate riders either because we don't know too much about the Swedish rider, Ridland, but there's always the slight possibility that she's bluffing or that she comes good towards the finish and she can put in an attack. She's been sitting on the wheel of Veracudo for a long, long time. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a little bit more come from the, the Swedish rider when the peloton gets a bit closer. Well, you don't get on the podium of the Swedish national championships for nothing on both the time trial and the road race. So she is one of the stronger riders in this country. Now the team car for Bigler is coming up to the front. Great helicopter shots here. You don't get to see that much. It shows um, the differences a bit, but you can't get a three-minute gap in one helicopter shot, and that's the that's the gap at the moment. So the situation after one hour and 41 minutes of racing. Kudoder Rutland, they lead. Then we have one lone chaser in between, Anastasia Tchulkova for Rasvelo. And now we have seven chasers. We already identified Lucinda Brandt, and we are trying to get images there to see who else is there, which teams are represented in that counter-attack. Because almost three minutes for these two riders. A little pat on the back here for Rutland for Kudoder, so please do some work for me here. Help me out as we pass the campsite and then there you see Vogoda on the top of your screen as we uh, go towards the seventh lap of this race so we're halfway 12 laps times 11 is 132 kilometers it's quite a long race here do you know if there's a, a maximum amount of kilometers for a women's race? Well, um, Jose, I think uh, the maximum women's race is about between 130 and 145 kilometers. We don't see many races uh, longer than 145 these days. Uh, the women would like to race a little bit longer occasionally, but uh, most of the races uh, for the World Cups, we see them around the 130 kilometer mark. It's quite consistent this year, I think, the distances of the World Cups. When we get into Holland, we see them uh, racing over a little bit longer distances. The chasing group here with uh, representation from Rabobank, specialised Lululemon, Bulls. We see uh, Giant Shimano, Wiggle Honda there. All the big teams have somebody in this counter-attack. Estado de Mexico in pink. So this is, uh, this is Carmen Small here at the front for Specialized Lou Lemon. Michael Paulspool is there again. Romy Casper also back in a counter-attack. We see um, for Wiggle, it's Emilia Farlin, Lucinda Brandt here, the former Dutch champion. You can see the uh, black bands that they're wearing on their shoulder to uh, remember the Dutch rider, the Dutch mountain biker that got killed during the World Cup in France yesterday. The Dutch teams wear with uh, mourning bands here. For Estado de Mexico, so it's a seven-woman counter-attack, and it seemed like they picked up Chulkova as well. Well, that would mean that they're moving along quite fast, and they are making equal turns, and it looks like their speed is quite high compared to these two riders, so we might see that they're closing, closing down on this gap, but uh, we won't see the peloton sitting up for too much longer. There's going to be a reaction to that move, although very well represented by most of the teams, not necessarily the big favourites from each team, It'll be interesting to see how long the peloton sit back and uh, are happy with that, that makeup of riders. Back to the finish straight here as we go into uh, the seventh lap. On this lap, we're going to see some uh, points for the sprint classification. Classification that's being led by Iris Sloppendel. She's got 20 points, but she's not here, the former winner. 
Then uh, Anna Maria Stricker for Astana and Rebecca Ruyasak for the Australian team who got her points in Chongming Island. They both have 12 points. And then Van Dijk and Van der Breggen are at eight. So if uh, Kudoler takes the points here, that will be a good thing for Iris Sloppendel. And uh, she can round up that classification next week in France. Let's see on the finish line what the gaps are as we go into lap seven. Well, to race within a race today with uh, Emmy Johansson trying to close in on that uh, lead of Lizzie Armistead. She's led from the start. She's been very confident. She sat out a couple of the World Cups. She didn't go to China because she wasn't interested in the travel. And then she uh, she didn't race the Sparkars and World Cup when she was racing the Commonwealth Games. Which so is a very good reason to cancel it. Absolutely. A very prestigious race, the Commonwealth Games, for anyone in the Commonwealth. A uh, very, very important important race. So, uh, But to sacrifice two World Cups when you're holding the lead, uh, she's done it very, very confidently. And it looks like they're in a pretty strong position today. Chulkova is being caught by the chasing group where her uh, teammate Kushinskaya is already uh, present. We also have Convalonieri for Estado de Mexico. Maria Giulia Convalonieri. Beautiful name that is. So two Resvela riders now here in this chasing group. As we can see the time gaps to the two leaders. We have Romy Casper there. We have Carmen Small for Specialized Lululemon. Michael Paul Spool for Giant Shimano. Emilia Fallin for Wiggle Honda. We have uh, both riders for Resvelo with Chulkova and Kushinskaya. Lucinda Brandt for Rabobank. And Confalonieri in pink for uh, Estado de Mexico. Those are the chasers. No riders for Orica AIS in this group. That's remarkable. Well, it's not really the position that uh, Orica AIS want to be in with uh, wanting to win today with Emmy Johansson. They're going to have to use up their team to get on the front of the peloton and close this down. It's, uh, it could also be a tactic to try and send Emmy Johansson across, but no doubt she'll be very heavily marked by some of the Rabobank riders and the likes of someone like Georgia Bronzini and Kirsten Wheel. They'll know now that Emmy Johansson has to make a move at some point. We're currently at a 40 kilometers an hour schedule, which means that uh, finish is being expected around two o'clock here in Sweden. A little before that, in Orica AIS, they lead the peloton at the moment. And we'll see on the finish line confirmation of the names of the eight chasers so there are the two leaders Kudo de Rutland and almost two minutes behind that the chasers with Chulkova and Kushinskaya for Resvelo, Lucinda Brandt for Rabobank, Emilia Fahlin for Wiggle, Michael Polspool for Giant Shimano, Carmen Small for Specialized and Romy Kasper for Bulls Dormans. So that seems like a strong uh, chasing group all the big teams are there except for Orica but you already explained that. Well it's great to see Emilia Fahlin from Sweden, riding for Wiggle Honda in that chasing group. She's spoken very openly about the challenges she's had in the last couple of years with wondering whether she should continue with cycling and trying to find motivation. And obviously a lot of athletes go through that, but she certainly found the motivation to get out there and have a go today because you have to be fit and healthy and in condition to be able to be in a break at this point of a World Cup bike race. Yeah, we were discussing the maximum length of a women's bike race. The always knowledgeable Peloton watch on Twitter knows it. The UCI regulations say it's 140 kilometers max. So uh, with 132, it's quite a long race today. I think it's uh, one of the, the longer races, 132, because some of the uh, races around 98, 100 kilometers are a little bit more comfortable or um, a little bit more common than a 132 kilometer race but in Holland we we often do see races that are over a distance further than 140 kilometers but how they get around the UCI rule is that they 
they have a neutral zone. So they may have a neutral zone of seven to 10 kilometers and then they start the uh, zero where they'll put a board up and they say, okay, this is zero, race is on, uh, race is open. And the commissaire opens the race up with a wave of the flag. So it's an interesting fact, 140 kilometers is a UCI regulation for the length of a women's bike race. There was no neutral zone here today. It was uh, riding straight from the gun. We saw to uh, do a little re recap of what we've seen. We saw attacks from Linnea Schöblom. She was the first one for the Swedish national team. Then it was Hanna Nilsson also for the Swedish national team. And then uh, the third one was this woman, Marlin Rudlund. Fira Kuro to bridge the cross. We've seen some counter attacks. And now they have a gap of almost two minutes on an eight woman chasing group and the peloton is not that far behind them. So racing is on. Here you see the um, eight chasers led by Michael Paulspool, then Carmen Small, Romy Kasper, Emilia Farlin, two riders for Resvelo. And Confalamiri is uh, the one in the last wheel. He's in the Brandt for Rabobank and for Rosvelo, Chukova and Kuzinskaya. Well, this is one of the very few times that we've seen the Swedish rider of Ridland on the front. Virakudo to taking a breather, but uh, she had a long time sitting on the wheel, so she's recovered a little bit. She's got a little bit more power left in the legs, Ridland, and she's willing to give that now. And this perhaps may be the best thing for the two of them. So Emilia Farland taking to the front and the pace in uh, this group is quite high. They want to try and reach those two riders. Not much action from the peloton. Like we said, it's only Orica AIS missing from this, but we might see it liven up if, if the riders, the team, the directors are not happy with the makeup of that little chasing group. She's back on the front now, taking out the majority of the work again. She'll be grateful that she got that little bit of help from Ridland. Goes to show that uh, she wants to help and contribute to this break. But uh, the fact is that Vera Kudota is a stronger rider. So in that instance, like I said, it was great to see that Vera just kept riding. She didn't have any discussions or arguments or say, OK, well, if you're not going to ride, I'm going to sit up. She just kept going about her thing. Let Ridland sit on for a while and recover, and now she's getting a little bit of help again. You see the skies here? One minute they're blue, the next minute they're black. So, like we said, it... Uh, I'm glad we have a roof over our head. Exactly. <laughs> it could be a little bit challenging for the riders, but uh, at this point, when they get so close to the finish of a World Cup, I think they won't notice the difference in the weather changes. Their minds are somewhere else at the moment. They're so focused. They need to be focused at every second of this bike race from this, this moment onwards. About keeping warm, of course, uh, we've got the arm warmers at the moment. Not, a m much, not many racers racing with leg warmers. They've got special creams to keep the muscles warm, don't they? It's another discussion that the riders have with their uh, masseurs before the race about which creams they're going to use. Of course, they have the light creams and then the heavier ones and then ones for the rain that the uh, the oily ones that the rain just runs straight off but uh, riders will know what they prefer some riders like to have the really hot cream and then other riders really don't like that feeling that kind of burning sensation Is it like uh, like tiger balm kind of stuff or yeah i think there's, there's a lot of different brands and and model makes and uh like we said the different um levels of heat uh and feeling and there's also oils that can cool the legs as well that uh, the riders use in the likes of the races like Giro d'Italia when the sun's out and it's quite warm. But uh, today, I think the riders would have used a little bit of heat cream and then sometimes they use the cream to heat the legs and then they put oil over the top so the rain will roll off. And uh, yeah, it's not very, very common that a rider would wear leg warmers because once they get wet, then they're just a bit heavy and uh, not as easy to take off as the arm warmers. Race Radio reports at the moment three and a half minutes to the peloton. That's a really big gap they've got here. 
Well, my guess is that the uh, chasing group might be coming a little bit closer to the breakaway, but the peloton, there's no action in the peloton. The peloton may have called it a day and decided, OK, we're happy with that break because there's no outstanding rider in this chasing group. I call it the break, but uh, there's two riders ahead of them. So this chasing group, they're all very equal in talent and strengths, and it's very hard to pick who would be the strongest rider of this group. So... The main peloton may have decided, OK, we're going to give our riders that are in that break a chance. And uh, a lot of people in the peloton will also be looking at Orica AIS to take up the chase. There's no reason why Orica AIS shouldn't um, at this point. So it will be interesting to get some pictures of the main peloton and find out if Orica AIS are indeed chasing. But if they're not, it could be a game over if this goes out much further. to the chasers here. They just passed the, the top of the climb where the Swaniers were there with the bottles handing out. It will be interesting to see what happens in the peloton at the moment. Who's doing the work there? Rabobank have a very strong rider here in Lucinda Brandt, the former Dutch champion. It was a very interesting Dutch championship this year where Lucinda Brandt seemed to be uh, repeating her performance of the year prior and um, it was her teammate, actually, Ira Sloppendel, who um, countered that break. And Lucinda Brandt went totally out of energy, and Ira Sloppendel took the Dutch national title. Here we see the peloton, as we uh, requested. Yes, and we predicted that it was Orica AIS taking up the chase for Emmy Johansson, and it's Scandalara, the Italian riding for the Australian team, Orica AIS, that's taken up the chase. She's on the front. You can see that's a 100% committed effort. She's been told by the race director, get on the front and use every single thing you've got. And my guess is that once Scandalara's finished her turn, that another Orica AIS rider is going to make their way to the front. They're here with um, Catherine Carfoot. We already discussed her. Shara Gillo, the... Um uh, Melissa Hoskins, Scandalara and Amanda Spratt and of course Emma Johansson. We've got some pictures of Melissa Hoskins just earlier in the peloton. She looked quite comfortable and strong so they won't be using her up until they absolutely need to because she's a handy little sprinter and if she needs to have a sprint at the finish just to protect some points of Emma Johansson, they'll need to uh, have her at the finish so she'll be the last rider that they'll call to the front. So We were kudo. discussing before that uh, the teams were more or less the same and uh, I thought that Gracie Alfin would be on the start line, but she's not. She was in the team time trial, and uh, her place in the road race has been taken by Catherine Garford. So it's not all the same, same teams, as the Australian uh, champion is not here. great to show this race live from Sweden to give you a little bit of um, flavor for women's cycling to be able from the start where it happened see the break forming up the road with uh, Rydlund and uh, Vera Kudoder. she lives in Apeldoorn near the um, Omnisport indoor cycling track where she does uh, a lot of training as well Team car comes up. The team director of Virakudota. It's unusual that he's not driving. <laughs> Normally the team director's not driving. 
Yeah, sometimes the case that uh, the team director is in the in the passenger seat, but uh, more often than not, he's in the driver's seat. Whatever he said to Vera Kudoda, it's motivated her. It's so surprising for me that the gap is still going out because you would expect them to be getting tired, but I think they've played this very, very well. Uh, Vera Kudoda's just got into rhythm. She's, she looks good. She looks strong. She doesn't look like she's tiring. That's what we said right from the start. She's a dangerous rider to let go. It might be a big mistake the peloton made quite early on in this race. Well, we'll see how it pans out. We're uh, just over halfway here. We still have almost two hours to race, so um, still quite a long way to go. You can see the red dots there on the fork of the bikes. That's the transponder. That's how they um, measure when a rider is over the finish line. Sometimes it's on the rear fork. Today it's on the front. And uh, that's how they can exactly measure who's where. She's wearing a very large watch. Just getting a shot of there. No doubt that's probably got some sort of heart rate device in it. If it's just for fashion, it's an interesting choice, but it's probably a little bit more than that. I'd say that there's a... Uh... Well, she's got the SRM device on her um, handlebars. It's where the riders can, um, can clock all the uh, relevant details, um, wattage, uh, cadence, and they can just put that in the computer, send it to their trainers who can analyze what um, they did and where they can improve. Well, where they're coming up to the one kilometer to go banner there and as we can see they've got a left hand corner and after a couple of oh no they haven't they've got a right hand corner they go down and under a bridge and then up to the left hand corner i've only done this course about a hundred times so <laughs> i've done it once this morning in the safety and warmth of a car um there's a big crash reported in the peloton and uh, we'll fill you in on details once uh, once we hear from that of course, you can also follow the race live on Twitter with the uh, excellent commentary today by Tina Levin. And she's in that white car, seeing all the action. But from the convoy, from the team manager from High Tech, we're here, there's a big crash, and hopefully we can get some images. But there's two bikes up the road, one here with the um, first group, with the leading duo, and there's another one with the um, eight chasers. Helicopter at the moment refueling but we'll get that up for the final which is um, no doubt going to be thrilling well you can hear the rain outside it's very very heavy at the moment i wouldn't be surprised if that was uh, a little bit of an influence on the accident that we've heard that there has been in the main peloton uh, it's very very dramatic weather out there at the moment the winds picking up and uh, the skies are black the rain's coming down very very hard you see the expression on the faces now uh, of the, Sw the Swedish rider here just having to challenge with a little bit of vision issues with such heavy rain so everyone's safe in the chasing group but as we said you can see the expressions on their face that they're having to be challenged with the heavy raindrops so 44 seconds is chase group behind the leaders. So they've closed in a gap of over two and a half minutes when they started the chase. So they've been moving a little bit faster than Kudoda and Ridland, the two riders out in the lead. And this is Carmen Small on the front here, setting the pace. A very, very strong time trial rider on the podium at the World Championships last year. She was part of all the teams winning here in Fogoda and winning the World Championship title. We saw her flick her arm there. She wants more help from these riders. She wants to close this gap, wants to be in the running for the win. They're probably going to do equal turns until they get there. Brand on the front now for Rabobank. She's keen to have a go. So Rabobank are happy with that. Uh, and here we see Orica AIS putting in the work with Emma Johansson with the um, yellow and white helmet in fourth position behind her teammates. Valis Gondolares there, Carford is there. Also uh, specialised there with the uh, German champion Lisa Brenauer, and uh, I saw Mayana Voss at the front as well. If I recognise, nope, it's her teammate. This is Mel Hosking, the Australian sprinter, on the front. So 
Orica AIS have called every single rider to the front. This is a very, very desperate moment for them. They're going to try and launch Emma Johansson across, but they are using every single rider they have left in the race to close this gap. Uh, they mean business. They mean business, but they've made a very, very big mistake. Obviously, that uh, they shouldn't have missed that move, but they have. Emmy Johansson just taking a drink. No, that's Shari Gillo. And then Emmy Johansson in the yellow helmet. So three riders in front of Emmy Johansson. Everyone behind Emmy Johansson will know that she's going to make a move at some point. This is uh, the first peloton, and it's uh, reduced dramatically because of that crash. Uh, Mayana Voss is in this group. Uh, as are most of the Rabobank riders. And then a second peloton now comes up the road here. They're about 200 mi meters out from the finish. There was a crash in the peloton, so there is a split now, but most of the big team riders are at the front. Let's see who is in this second group as it passes by the finish line. We see some uh, riders from Bigler. Also, uh, Talita de Jong is there for Rabobank. Riders from Tipco, from Futon, and they are now uh, about 25 seconds behind the leaders, uh, behind the group with uh, Mayana Vos. And groups are scattered on the road as they pass the finish here in Vogorda with the Astana B Pink riders, Zarzufi and Dobrinina, also in a group behind. And all the team cars passing the finish as uh, the clouds get even darker than they were before. They're up for a very gruesome finale here. Well, the weather has taken a turn for the worst. The wind has picked up. The rain was quite heavy there at one point. It was very difficult for the riders to see. You can see that the cornering has slowed down a little bit. Also by these two out in front, taking it a little bit more careful. You can see Viracudo is just starting to rock a little bit. We haven't seen that yet, so it's time to empty the tank, as they say. Leave everything out on the road. And at some point, you've got to make that conscious decision. And now we see Viracudo. She's going to give this all she's got. Let's get a little recap of the situation at the moment after a little over two hours of racing. We've got Kudoder and Rudland, who are the two leaders, about 40 seconds behind are um, a group of eight with Michael Polspool, Lucinda Brandt, Carmen Small, Emilia Falin, Romy Kasper, Kon Valomieri, Kushinskaya and Anastasia Chulkova. And then um, a further... Um, um, a further minute back. Virakudo just looking as she went around that corner to see if she can see the peloton in sight. In the meantime, she may not be aware, but she's dropped the rider from Sweden. And Rydland. maybe it's going to be for good now, but uh, Rydland did a great job clawing herself back to the wheel of uh, Kudo for maybe like 26 times at the moment. Well, it looks like she's going to make her way back again. She's an absolute fighter and she'll no doubt have Martin Vespi, the Swedish national coach from the car, in her ear, motivating her. Look, she's made contact again, so she's an absolute fighter. Her director will not let her lose this wheel. Come on, you've come this far, just hold on. And she'll have to mentally dig so deep she's going to get better from this experience because she's probably finding limits now that she knew she never knew she had absolutely as long as the fear is taken away of failure the director just reinforces that you know we just want to see how far you can go test yourself here how far you can go and uh, we see that she's made her way back again she's taken a drink so she's been told get on the wheel take a drink take a deep breath you know, this time up the hill is going to be uh, the, the toughest time for her to try and try and hold the wheel again. And uh, they'll make that race to the top of the climb, see if she can get over the top with Vera. It'll be interesting to see if Vera tries to keep her with her. But I think Vera's made that conscious decision that uh, I can't wait any longer. I need to take this on now. So Orica AIS still on the front. Scandalara just leaving a little gap there, but uh, doing a great job now to try and close this gap down recognize some of the main protagonists in this group. Lizzie Armstead is there, Amir Hansen, Marianne Vos, Ellen van Dijk, Annemiek van Vloten. We all saw them in that uh, group, which was the peloton, but which has been uh, reduced uh, enormously. 
as the race progresses, as it gets tougher, as there are crashes, you can see that the roads are so wet, they're almost mirrors at the moment. There's going to be a lot of water on them, which um, induces the risks of having a flat tyre because the stones that you normally have on the road, they cling to your tyre instead of just um, getting off them on dry roads. So um, the chances of having a flat is are much bigger. This is uh, the fourth group at the moment with some uh, Park Hotel riders. We also see some high-tech Tipco. We saw Talita de Jong here for Rabobank. So this is the fourth group up the road. And the leader. We're now in the eighth lap. Next lap, there's going to be the last sprint of the day, the last mountain sprint. And if Vera Kudo takes that, she's going to take the mountain jersey as well, which is uh, quite a remarkable achievement. I don't think that uh, the Swedish rider is going to contest her on that. It's, it's more like uh, a gentleman's agreement that you have then. If somebody in the break does most of the work, you get her to take also the points that are on offer. Well, absolutely. Even if it was in the legs of the uh, the Swedish rider of Ritalin to sprint past Vera for the points, she it's wouldn't not do done. that. It's not done. Uh, she's got a very smart director back in the car that will be saying that. Uh, we're not interested in this. Uh, follow the wheel across the line. Let Vera take the points. We're going to wait till you recover a little bit, see if we can do another turn just to help Vera justify you being there for so long. But this is the Orica AIS team. Valentino Scandalara, very strong at this part of the season. Shara Gillo, Mel Hosking. Scandalara is just like Kudoda, is a rider who's always on the offensive. Um, she doesn't pull off the really long breaks that Kudota can, but she's always somebody who managed to um, make the race very attractive. And now we can see that the two groups are coming together. Kudota there on the top of your screen, then Rutland, and then the eight chasers. They're going to um, make the connection. They're going to be uh, a ten-woman breakaway. Well, Rutland, I don't think she's going to stay in this group for very long. So after two hours and 11 minutes of racing, you can see the group coming from behind, which makes that we have 10 leaders. And it'll be interesting to see what happens then. Who's going to do the work in the peloton? Who's going to help Orica AIS? Or are, for example, Rabobank happy with having Lucinda Brandt in this breakaway? Or do they want to bring back Anne van der Breggen or Annick van Vleuten or even Marianne Vos? Well, like I said, Marianne Vos might be interested in letting her Dutch teammates have a little bit of a chance and an opportunity. It's still six seconds between Kudota and that chasing group. But uh, if Mariana Voss was to ask the team to get on the front and close it down, that's an opportunity lost for Brandon. Will they put faith in her or at least give her the opportunity to go for the win today? I think that they will. I think that Lucinda Brand has put herself in a position to have the opportunity to go for a World Cup win. And that's the type of person and team that Rabobank is. So it'll be interesting to see once Orica AIS are tired of uh, chasing on the front. We may just see Emmy Johansson do a little bit of work herself because she wants to be in this race and uh, she has nothing to lose. She has to go out after these riders. So very kudo to just having a look over her shoulder. And we have got a gap of 50 seconds to the peloton. So everything is within a minute of each other now. We are in lap eight and um, it makes them some real exciting racing today here in Vogorda. Well, hats off to Ridland. She has had an amazing ride to get back on the wheel again. She's one for the future to watch because uh, she's done a great job. Go Amelia, a wiggle Honda. The fans are out there on the side of the road. She's put herself into this break now. They're just making contact. So that's it for Vera Kudota and Ridland for the breakaway of the day. They've made some exciting racing for us to watch. And uh, going out to three minutes, that was a, a moment where we started to think maybe this can actually survive. But uh, as we've seen, it's been pulled back by the chasing group. That's Amelia Farland coming through now. Race, Very, racing at home in Sweden. Very cool tweet by uh, Jessie McLean. She says, it's so not like us, 
not like Orica AAS to miss a move. And it looks like they're paying for it now. And she cheers on her teammates sitting at home, feeling a little bit bittersweet about that. She would have loved to be part of the action here. Well, it's not, uh, it's not very pleasant out there, but it is a World Cup. Like we said, very prestigious to get a start here in a World Cup. And uh, not many of these riders will be too concerned about the weather. So Lucinda Brand represented for Rabo. She always always rode on the team of uh, Leon Ten Van Morsel until this year, signing with uh, Rabobank. Well, 2013 actually was her first year with Rabobank. And she describes cycling like a pub with no beer. So obviously very passionate about her sport. And uh, cycling is a big part of her life, as it is for anyone at this level. You can see that uh, some riders are struggling here in this uh, group of eight. And as we expect it, the Swedish rider is the first one in trouble. She's given her all there on the road, left it all out there. This is um, for Resvelo. It's Chulkova. She has a teammate with her in uh, Kushinskaya. Then for Estado de Mexico, it's uh, Maria Giulia Convalinieri. For Bulls Dolmans in orange, Romy Kasper. In the other orange, Wiggle Honda shows it's uh, Emilia Fahlin, the Swedish rider in this break. The other Swedish rider, because Rutland. And then uh, Kudo that here, picking onto the wheel of Mike Polspool for Giant Shimano. And Lucinda Brandt is the representative for Rabobank Live here in this uh, break. And this is the group with um, Mayana Vos, who has been led by the Orica AIS train. They are working hard to get this back together. So the names once more of um, our leaders. We have them on the screen again. The big question is that all the fans want to know, is it possible for Lizzie Armistead to secure the World Cup series today? With a win, she would absolutely do that. And in style. Is it possible for Emma Johansson to take the victory for the World Cup Series from Lizzie Armitstead? Well, right now in this very moment, it doesn't look likely. But uh, if Emma Johansson was to win today, it would definitely put her in the game for the World Cup Series in 2014. I must say Lizzie Armitstead is looking quite strong. Yeah, as we said earlier on today, she um, has done four World Cup races. And uh, she's been on the podium four times, winning the first one in Drenthe, then being on the podium in Flesh Wallon, in Tour of Flanders, and in Binda, three times second. So uh, overall, she's very consistent, and that makes her the overall leader with a 130 point margin. And if you know that the winner gets 120 points, that is a really considerable margin that Lizzie Armstead took. And she will be happy as well if she wins this overall World Cup that she did it by winning. Though she said her season goal was the Tour of Flanders. And though she was very happy for Ellen van Dijk, who pulled off an uh, amazing solo effort there in Flanders. She would have loved to win that one herself because uh, that was her season goal. And she was second there. Very kudo to have slipped into this group quite comfortably swapping off turns it's just amazing how she can be so strong this group is 45 seconds in front of the main peloton we see it's orica ais doing all the work 45 seconds is achievable but they only have three people ahead of emmy johansson to do all of this work and emmy johansson's closely marked there by mariana voss and, then and van ellen Dijk. van dyke it's uh, 30 odd riders here in this uh, peloton Kirsten Wield, one of the favourite sprinters, is still in there. You 
can see now the uh, helicopter shot. 45 seconds. Closing in slowly, coming back into the city now. There's your shot there on the middle to right hand side of your screen of the breakaway group. And just at the bottom of your screen there, the peloton. So this is the lead group. And Rutland still hanging on here. Marlin Rutland still hanging on in the last wheel in this group. As we can see them uh, coming towards the fixed cameras with Michael Polspool, Kudoder, Carmen Small, Lucinda Brandt, Romy Kasper, Emilia Falin, Kuzinskaya, Chulkova, and um, Konvalinieri and Rutland. Those are the names in the breakaway. And Kudoder, she doesn't shy the work even after everything that she did so far. Very cool, Dota. She's on the front, as you said. She's not scared of doing too much, but that's the last corner there. Very, very slippery. It's going to be an exciting finish. Definitely suit the riders of, like, Mariana Voss. It's going to be such a high pace in the finish coming into that corner. And even in the dry, it's a very, very difficult corner to navigate. Uh, the first one to step on the pedals is probably most likely to hold it up. It's a long sprint from the corner, but it's very difficult to come over somebody also out of that last corner. Midland still holding on on the back. I wonder if um, Kudota will uh, think about those mountain points coming up in this lap. She's still uh, sitting quite comfortably, as she said, in this group. But uh, they're only 45 seconds behind with uh, Skandalara, Hoskins, Gillo, Johansson. You see Evie Stevens there, Evelyn Stevens with the glasses, Brennauer, Amy Peters, Kirsten Bilt, Lexi Warak there. Chantal Black, all the way at the back of this group. And the boss is there. Roxana Knetemann with number 13, which was a little bit of bad luck for her in the team time trial as well, because uh, she torn her skin suit at the front, so they had to get all the safety pins out to repair it and make it a little bit more decent for the team time trial. All the names here. Can, uh, see for yourself. All the big names are there. Van Vleuten, Van der Brugge, Johansson. We didn't see Mayanna Voss's name, but she's most definitely in that group. Yeah, she's riding close to the front. She looks comfortable, so she'll be ready for the move of Emmy Johansson when this uh, group gets a little bit closer. Group with some Parkatel riders, Natalie van Gogh there, Mia Radotic. And they, they are beaten. They will not be able to come back. All the big name teams, all the big name riders are in that first chasing group. And they are um, done, I guess. It's very difficult to finish a race in these conditions once you're out of the race as such. Now, like we said, there's not much chance of them coming back into the, the peloton. All the big names and the lead riders and the stronger riders in the race are in that group. So it's very unlikely that these riders will make it back to uh, be in the running for the, for the podium or even to assist their teammates. They may have uh, done a job earlier on in the race, but uh, I think that uh, that'll be it for them for the day. So here's the leading group. It's a strong group. Strong group of riders all committed, working well together. You see in second wheel there, Carmen Small. Last year in 2013 was her first year in Europe as a full-time professional in the European circuit. She decided that this is the life for me and uh, had a phenomenal year. She's from Colorado.
You see Amelia Fallon of Wiggle Honda just let Carmen Small slip in there. So maybe these riders, are, the last three riders, doing it a little bit tough, trying to hold on to the wheel. Technical part of the circuit. Taking it a little bit cautious. But these riders mean business. They're all very motivated to try and stay away. Very kudo to now doing it a little bit tough off the back. She'll need to close that gap if she wants to go for the mountain sprint. She'll make that her ambition. We'll see if she's able to make it back. Very, very important that she does. If she knows that she's in the running for that mountain jersey, that she can take from Amalusik, who's not here today. It would be a great reward to be on the podium in the mountains jersey for all the efforts that she's done today. You see Skandalara, the last rider on the peloton there because she did a very, very big turn in order to try and get Emma Johansson back in the running. Not very kudoda, just making her way back onto the back as we expected. She's going to fight pretty hard to stay in this for the points. She may even go and talk to the other riders in the in the group here and say, look, I've worked very hard today. I'd like to get those points. I just wanted to ask you that because normally there's some sort of agreement going on in these groups that the other riders in the, these, this group have absolutely no use for the mountain points. They're not up in that ranking. No, they wouldn't, and they also probably are not aware of Virakudo's situation with the mountain points. It's not something that the directors will be looking at, so if Vera can get the energy to get up alongside these riders or roll through, she may be able to give them some sort of indication that she'd like to take the mountain points and uh, well deserving of it today. Uh, obviously, uh, she'll need to put the hard work in. She can't slow down the group, and the group's not going to slow down for, for Vera Kudo to, to take the points. But uh, if she's able to move to the front and uh, make them aware that that's what she's doing, then uh, there will be some, some cooperation there. Despite the uh, effort that uh, Chukova put in, she's still up there at the front with her uh, teammate Kushinskaya. And uh, Kudo, they're uh, trying to pick on the wheel on, of Konva Lanieri. And uh, the much trouble her uh, Swedish breakaway mate had getting onto her wheel. Now she has the same getting onto the Italian's wheel. Well, Rosvello are in the strongest position here in numbers. They've got two. No one else has two in the break here. But they're not the strongest riders. Not, uh, not on paper, they're not the strongest riders. We don't know as much about the two Ross Velo riders as we do of the likes of Brand and Possible and Farlin also. Being on home ground, she's going to have to dig pretty deep. It's uh, the toughest part of the circuit for Amelia Farlin on the climb here. I think that Kudoro is going to struggle here on this climb. She already had to let the break go after some corners. And just like you said, Rochelle, they are not going to wait for her. They are not going to give her any presence because their gap is only a few seconds to the uh, chasing group, to the peloton, to the 30 art riders behind them. Well, no presence today. No, she still will give it a go, I think. She uh, she can uh, get close enough to the top, and it looks like she's, she's actually in the peloton now, so... If she's aware of the point situation that she could end up in the jersey, she, she will do everything she can to uh, cross that line and take the points. But uh, she's not doing it easy. She's going to have to dig very deep. It's going to hurt a lot. But uh, if she was able to do that, she would then sit up. But it uh, doesn't look like she's going to have the legs. She's just barely managing to hold on here. Following Lucinda Brandt. Emilia Farlin leading this group now. Ahead of Romy Kasper, Convalinieri. Mike Polspool, Kuzinskaya, Chulkova, Harman Small, and Lucinda Brandt. Oh, Ross Bello getting two bottles off there. You can see by the looks on their faces that uh, the pace is quite high, they're digging quite deep. Amelia Farlin looks comfortable, which is interesting on the top of the climb. Oh, this is one shot that shows it all. 
Peloton closing in. Veracuda goes to the front to pick up the points. They are going to let her pick up the points. That is really great. And she takes full six points and she gets a great reward for the entire incredible show she put up today together with Marlin Rutland and she can go to the podium today to pick up that mountain jersey. Well that'll be a special moment for Vera Kudoda and for her sponsors. Let's say she's worked very hard today and like we said the peloton did not slow down. She had to do the work to cross the line first there and uh, with the amount of work that she's done today it wouldn't have been easy but uh, well deserving of something to take home today and, uh, and like you said before the style of racing she has attacking attacking nine out of ten times it gets her nowhere and it doesn't get her a victory today but it gets her a nice little reminder of uh, of today's race only a mere 15 seconds here and then it's all back together we see yeah. Evelyn Stevens and uh, Lisa Brenauer there for specialized Lululemon and Orica AIS lead to the chase we only have the helicopter shots at the moment waiting for the um, motorbikes to kick back in action. This is one of the fixed camera shots on the climb as the team cars pass by. So all the intermediate sprints are now done. Two times the mountain sprint, one time a intermediate sprint. They were all won by Vera Kudoder. Well, a few riders split up now, back in the cars. This is uh, the exciting race that we thought it would be coming into the finish. The explosion's about to happen. So a race of attrition, a lot of tired legs already. You certainly have to be in good form. It's not like a sprint race where you can uh, just, just hope on. that it comes back together. No, you've got to have the legs in a race like this. Like we were saying earlier, the hill doesn't look like that much, but it definitely plays a very, very big part in this race. About... 36 kilometers left to go under an hour of racing here in Vogoda World Cup round number eight of the season and a little recap of the season so far all the way back mid-march we saw Lizzie Armstead win the Ronde van Drenthe then in Italy in Trofeo Binda it was uh, Emma Johansson the Tour of Flanders was won by Ellen van Dijk after that fantastic solo effort then the flesh with the gruesome Mur de Wies it was Pauline Ferrand Prévost. Chongming Island, a superior Kirsten Wilt, won the race there. Sparkas and Giro, three weeks ago, it was Mayanne Vos. And the team time trial of only two days ago was won by specialized Lululemon. Seven different winners in the World Cup Series this year. Maybe we're going to get one of these names again on the top of the podium today. Can it be Mayanne Vos? Can it be Kirsten Wilt? Maybe Lizzie Armitstead, Ellen van Dijk, Emma Johansson. The only one not here is Ferrand Prévost. She's doing uh, the Mountain Bike World Cup in Miribel in France. It's going to be a very exciting finale, Rochelle. Looking forward to this. I'm looking forward to it too. It's very difficult to say which riders have the legs and uh, what's going to happen here. But uh, I think we're going to see an exciting, exciting finish. Very unlikely that it's going to come down to a bunch sprint, but uh, I think we'll definitely see a, s a smaller group than this come to the finish. And next time up the climb, we may see a few attacks go. So Orica AIS still driving it on the front there. Still a couple of sprinters like Kirsten Wield and uh, Georgia Bronzini in the peloton. As we saw last year, they didn't want to go to the finish with the sprinters, so we may see the same type of thing this year. You see a lot of riders are reaching for their pockets at the same time. That generally happens. One rider starts and then they think, hey, it's a good time to eat. There's a few riders eating, so it's not likely that the attacks are going to go right now. But you can see it's quite strung out. So the pace is, is being set by Orinka AIS. Everybody knows about a hunger knock, but what does a hunger knock do to your body? Well, there's a, at this point, there's no way back if, uh, if you go that far and you uh, get the hunger knock. Uh, 
there's no power in the legs. You're going to see stars and dizzy. It's hard to focus your eyes on anything. Uh, the breathing becomes short and panic kinds to take place and you can eat as much food as you want. But uh, the, this, this point in the bike race, I think it would be uh, disastrous and nearly impossible to, to get that energy back in time to, to be able to follow the moves when they come very shortly. So it's all about being ahead of the hunger knock to uh, eat and drink before it starts to happen. Marianne Vos there going uh, to the front. We see Ellen van Dijk that there. And uh, she just had a little bit of a, a chat with uh, Knetemann, Knetemann, one of her teammates. So there we go, another chat with Van Vleuten. So discussing tactics here. Who's good, who's not? Who are we, who are we going to ride for? Van Vluten making her way up to the front. So obviously they've got a job to do in the next few minutes. Former Tour of Flanders winner, Annemiek van Vleuten. It's really important that there is a leader in the team on the road. And it looks like it was Mariana Vos today because she's given a few indications and signals to the riders as she rode past them. She's obviously known for being a great race tactician as well. Very intelligent rider. Well, when you have the legs that she has, you can you can afford to be a great tactician because you can uh, you can dictate what's going to happen in the bike race, and she manages to do that quite often. Uh, having a strong team like she has, there's a lot of cards to play. There's a lot of different tactics that they can employ, and uh, you know, eight, eight out of ten times they pull off the race win. And uh, they are the fa favourites here. You can see in that uh, small peloton that we saw that they have the numbers. They have one rider in the break here. They've they got at least three riders in the chasing group with Vos, Kneteman, Van Vleuten. And uh, we already identified Talita de Jong in the second group. And um, I'm pretty sure Anna van der Breche should be in the, the first, first group. chasing group as well. They've got uh, former Dutch road race champion Koos Moerenhout as their race director their sports director in the race a lot of former pro riders being team directors here in the women's cycling look at this Josie that's uh, very uh, interesting <laughs> that could order still managed to draw the the group. wow yeah that's uh, impressive I think she uh, she'll win some fans today because that's some really impressive riding by Vera Kudoda she looks so composed she's definitely having one of the better days on her on the bike she really can be grimaced there for Michael Paulspool, the Belgian rider for Giant Shimano. Really suffering. She was also in one of these earlier moves to uh, to counter Kudo and Rutland. So she's uh, she's the woman for um, Giant Shimano to do that work today. But the gap is only a uh, measly 15 seconds. As we uh, go towards the finish line again, and then we have another 33 kilometers left to ride. So it's full final here. Possible gives the flick of the flick of the arm. Cinder Brand, calm and small, coming through with Amelia Farlin. So everybody in this group willing to work, but are they strong enough? We said then they've taken it out. They've taken the break out to 27, 22 seconds. Calm and small takes the corner. You can see in the back of the screen that the peloton is coming. But the legs of Scandalara must be quite tired by now. They've still got Shara Gillow there and Mel Hosking also still in, in the line there. Very tired legs, I would guess, of Orenka AIS. But uh, Emmy Johansson looks quite comfortable. And She's not wearing glasses. A lot, of, uh, a lot of the girls are. But it can be a little bit of a disadvantage with the weather conditions we have today. It's sometimes easier to ride without. Lynn Stevens, in the last wheel, she was one of the main engines in the team time trial team. There's been some interesting talk about uh, Specialized Lululemon, given that they are the strongest team in the team time trial in the world this year. That they haven't managed to pull off many bike race wins, apart from the team time trials. They put a lot of effort into specializing in the team time trial, and uh, the rewards are big for that, because it's a world title at stake but they're still looking for sponsors next year. Christy Scrimger's, Scrimger's team are uh, looking for new sponsors. They've got a crowdfunding project going on, but they also need some big um, company sponsors to keep the team on the road. 
And it seems uh, almost impossible to think that they're not going to be in the peloton next year. But um, it's hard for them at the moment, and I'm sure that they're working uh, vigorously on uh, getting new sponsors on board. And uh, the thing that they did here in Fogada with the team time trial will surely help. And uh, if they repeat their performance next month in Ponferrada, I hope that some sponsors will say, yes, we want to be part of that amazing team. Well, Scandalara, Shara Gillo, Mel Hosking, Emma Johansson of the Orica AIS team. Still working very hard. And the gap is increasing for our nine leaders. So it's uh, Orica AIS versus the nine riders up at the front. And they get no help from any other teams. The other teams are there to counter the attacks that might possibly happen, but they are not putting in any effort to help the chase. It's down to Skandalada, Hoskins and Sherry Gillow. Well, my guess is that this gap is going to close in uh, in the next couple of minutes because Shari Gillow is the Australian individual time trial champion, one of the stronger riders on the Orica AIS team. And if anybody can bring this back, we'll close it a little bit. Shari Gillow from the A Orica AIS team will be the one that can make a significant difference. So it'll be interesting to get the next time check. Uh, maybe she has legs, maybe she doesn't, but... Uh, Normally, she'd be one of the stronger riders, and she's, in, she's a time trial specialist, so this is her thing. We have through the race radio that Annemiek van Vloten, a former winner of this race, has got a flat tyre at the moment. And uh, it's a very inconvenient uh, time. There is, of course, uh, neutral support behind uh, the peloton, but it always takes at least 30 seconds to change a wheel and then pays back up to the group. Well, last year... Mariana Voss, her teammate, punched it on the very last lap. And there was a group of riders behind with Georgia Bronzini and uh, some other sprinters hoping that they could just make contact with Mariana Voss while she punched. But Mariana Voss's uh, wheel change was so quick. It was in this section of the course. You would think with only six or seven kilometers remaining that the race would be over. Well, she made her way back and won the bike race. So it was quite impressive. Uh, but yes, a very inconvenient t time for Van Vluten. She'll have to use the energy to get back to the peloton rather than working for the win. Uh, hopefully she gets back with no trouble. But uh, last year was a phenomenal performance by Mariana Voss. There's the peloton, still led by Orica AIS with uh, Emma Johansson in fourth position. Then three riders for Giant Shimano with in third position uh, Kirsten Bilt. 18 seconds is the gap as they go towards the climb. Well, it's not a huge difference. It doesn't seem like they're able to close it down quickly. It looks like they're just holding the pace at the moment, not losing time. But to, at some point, they're going to have to give a little bit more. This gr group obviously working very well together, doing equal turns, keeping the pace quite high. you're in a breakaway like this and you don't take um, pulls are the other riders are going to look at you crossly like what are you doing is there like talking in a breakaway like that it's like come on do your job yeah absolutely all the time so the riders will be communicating if uh, one rider's not doing uh, enough turns then they'll uh, talk to each other and say come on come on let's do this together we've got a great group and obviously a little little bit of uh, mental games out there to get the most out of the other riders that are in the break. Here we see the hel helicopter view. They're not too far behind, so they've nearly got the, the lead group in sight. Shara Gillow back on the front. So the Orica AIS team just taking a gel, getting some energy in. Mel Hosking is going to do a big turn here. Predominantly a track rider. Mixes it up in the track and road recently rode the Commonwealth Games, helping her Australian teammate Nettie Edmondson to a gold medal on the track. But a uh, very strong domestique for her road team as well. Road sprinter, had some success in China last year. But it's great to see that a, a sprinter, a pure sprinter like Mel Hosking doing such a good job, strong rider to uh, pull back. 
breaks like this. I won't expect that she'll have too many turns left in her, but she's doing a fabulous, fabulous job, proving that she's worthy of being in a team as a domestique and not just purely as a sprinter. There's the gap there. And it's very likely that on this lap we will see some riders jump out of that peloton and start to liven the, the race up here. Nastasia Chulkova leading here. She was the one bridging on her own, trying to bridge on her own to uh, the two leaders, remember? And she's still doing her work here. Romy Kasper for Bulls Dormans, the German rider. And then Kudo, they're still up there. Convanalieri comes to the front in uh, pink for Estado de Mexico. And still 19 seconds between these nine and the 30-odd uh, riders um, behind them with all the main protagonists. The Swedish rider in this uh, breakaway, Emilia Fallon, was asked a very interesting question in a pre-race interview by Swedish media. Would you be more excited to see your teammate Georgia Bronzini win today or Emmy Johansson, who rides for another Ooh, team? Oh, <laughs> that's a tough question. What did she answer? Oh, I don't know what she answered. I'm not, I'm not really sure. I uh, was just told that she was asked that question and it uh, would have been a very tough, tough One question to answer. Um, I'm sure that if her uh, team director was standing around that she would have had to say her teammate, <laughs> who she is um, obviously employed by the team, but uh, she uh, would love to see. It. She was actually the national road champion before this year. She wore the national champion's jersey last year, but uh, Emma Johansson earned that back again this year and wears that currently. So only eight seconds between the lead group and the peloton. So the winner of the bike race is most likely to come from the main peloton. George Mackay holding on here with um, Emily Moberg for high tech. She had a home race last uh, week in the Tour of Norway. And her dad was even the race director there. But she uh, she got dropped from the main field here for high tech. Two of their strongest riders not here, Ashley Mormon and Elisa Longoburghini. And we see an attack from Estado de Mexico. with um, Route de France winner Claudia Lichtenberg, formerly Hausler, the name that you might know her from. The strong climbing ace now for uh, Giant Shimano. She's there. There's an attack now from Bowles Dolmans. Not likely to be Lizzie Armitstead, but when we get a closer view, it actually looked like the style of Lizzie Armitstead. Pace is up. You can see it from the uh, shape of this group that riders are lining up, just holding each other's wheel. No um, echelons here today. The roads are not uh, that exposed for long enough that the wind can split the field, but uh, the difficulty of the course has split the field tremendously. And this is what is has remained after almost three hours of racing. We are now full in the finale with uh, a Bigler rider leading this group. Still could odor. It's incredible what she pulled <laughs> off today. I was just about to say, how is that possible? Normally it would not be possible that she still is leading this peloton. It's incredible. But everything's back together. We've got 40 riders in the lead and they are going to contest this uh, 
Crescent Vergara World Cup race, round eight of the UCI Road Women World Cup. And it's um, waiting for the tactics to play out. Who's going to attack? What are the teams going to do? There are uh, strong teams here. There are also um, lone riders, like, for example, Astana B. Pink, Susanna Zorzi, who's the only one of her team in this group. count about 30 riders left here you see a lot of orange from Bulls Dormans when one of their riders comes to the front here you see an attack <laughs> and it's being countered by specialized then wiggle Estado de Mexico Giant Shimano, Susanna Zorsi is there. I think it's Megan Guarnier up, up front there, the American climber. She's certainly come into form, I think. Guarnier, one of the uh, favorites for today. There was a lot of talk uh, amongst the teams last night at dinner in the race hotel few different riders from few different teams sitting around making their predictions and Gagne was a name that popped up well the attacks are coming fast and hard now it's all about thinning out this group even more it's um, a rubber bank at the moment I think that's von Flöter Followed by Ratto. It's Anna van der Breche. Well, it's hard to choose. It's hard to know. It's hard to predict who the race leader is. Then Lizzie Rabbit. Armistead with number one. She still wears her uh, body warmer. Uh, I think it's interesting. She wants to keep the rain off. Uh, she doesn't want to be uh, have a wet jersey, so she's kept the body warmer on. You can see there this body warmer has been lifted up because the UCI regulations say that you need to show your numbers on your back coming into the finish if you want to get a position recorded position but uh there we see lizzie armistead she wears the clear vest see-through well here in Fogoda, rain is plummeting down again it is really relentless today there's a lot of uh, people wondering whether the lizzie armistead could have held the form this cannot be vera kudota again surely not oh no <laughs> an but attack from this is going <laughs> against all logic all rules of nature but it is Vera Kudota going again <laughs> I've run out of adjectives to say what what she's doing here it's 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 incredible certainly making the race and uh, that's what we said she was all about so great to have such an animated rider in the women's peloton She's split the peloton. There's four the counter-attack now by Russ Velo. Russ Velo rider over the speed bumps. And now heading back to Vagorda again for the last two laps, the last 22 kilometers of this race. Well, the rain is very, very heavy at the moment. So they've had sunshine, they've had blue skies, they've had heavy rain, they've had drizzle. They've had a bit of everything today. We'll see when they come into the finish very soon how technical it actually is. Especially with you see the rain now bouncing off the road. It's very, very heavy rain. Amy O'Hanson in the yellow helmet there. On the left, we see uh, Lichtenberg for, for Liv, uh, Shimano, Paulsbull, Kirsten Wilt. They're chatting to each other. Emma Johansson in the middle of your screen there with the, um, the 
yellow and white helmet. Tip coat that might be Jasmine Glazer. And Anna von Dijk takes the pavement. Not really a shortcut that is, but Anna van der Breggen here. Johansson. And then we can see them uh, crossing the line. Manavol safely tucked there in this group. Still strength in numbers as uh, her teammate leads the group. Two laps to go. 22 kilometers left in this very exciting Crescent for Garda World Cup. And you can see all the action here on the UCI YouTube channel. And uh, things are going to heat up now. Well, not literally, because it's really cold. But in terms of racing, the show is on. Still Alessandra Nesmar in this group for the Swedish national team. That is uh, quite a good thing for the rider of firefighters Uppsala, the team she normally rides for. And uh, looking behind that peloton here at the line in Vogorda, you don't see uh, many other racer, many other riders. The convoy is closed, no dropped riders. Everybody has found, uh, has left the race apart from the group that we now see leading this um, World Cup with uh, 21K left to go. Great remark on Twitter by Owen Rogers. Is there a most aggressive rider today? I wonder who would be it. No, there's no red bib numbers here, but uh, Vera Kudoda gets a great reward for all the work she did today. She gets to go on the podium to get the mountain jersey. Well, Carmen Small driving the pace over the bridge. I think she may have gone into domestique role now, just setting the pace for teammates. Lisa Brunner. Yeah, what do you think is, um, if you look at Specialized, with Chantal Black, Brenauer, Canwell, Small, Stevens and Warak. Brenauer here in uh, the German national colours. Who do you think they're going to play? I think Brenner has had some really good form recently. Uh, fourth in, I think she was fourth in the Sparkhausen World Cup. Attack. She's definitely Looks like Chantal five. Black there. Followed by Ellen van Dijk. Or Wait. Megan Guarnier again. I think it's Megan Guarnier again. Yeah. Four balls. Followed by... Charlotte Becker and Michael Paulspool. She is uh, very good as well today, the Belgian rider. She does a great job in countering the attacks, being in uh, breakaways. And this attack is neutralized again. But we can see them coming thick and fast at the moment. We're in the last 20K of this World Cup race. And um, it's still everybody's to win, really. Well, everybody in this peloton has a chance now, and there were moments in, in the race today where there was breakaways or riders struggling and splits in the peloton where some of the riders who are now in the in the race for the podium positions may have thought that they were out of the race. But the closer you get to the finish, there's the likes of Kirsten Wield and Georgia Bronzini, sprinters, the closer. This could be Annemiek van Vluten of Rabo putting in an attack. Get that number in a minute. Yeah, Bronzini did really well in the Route de France as well, winning a stage, being on the podium many times in the sprints. So she has got some good form, the uh, former double world champion from Italy. You see two riders there from the Bowles Dormans team, Van Dyke in third. Giant Shimano have it very well under control as well here with uh, many riders that can play out to uh, counter the attacks to keep Kirsten Wilt in contention for that final sprint. Well, you can see that uh, Giant Shimano have definitely got some numbers up there in the top 15 riders. This is Van Vloten, followed by uh, Lichtenberg, Ellen van Dijk, Paul Spool. Van Vloten's really attacking the climb here. She won this race before Annemiek van Vloten. She did so in 2011 from a small group and she really attacked that year. 
and uh, she was in a chase group with Van, uh, in a breakaway with Van Dijk with Nicole Cook and the peloton thought they had the, the, the breakaway but they missed out on millimeters and uh, Van Vloten won that race in uh, great style and she's here Zorzi has to close the gap there in blue for Astana Strength in numbers here, mostly for Giant Shimano. Four riders here with Lichtenberg, with uh, Kirsten Wild. Amy Peters should be out there as well. Michael Paulspool. I think it's about 28, 29 riders in this group. Some riders coming back here. A few riders throwing their bottles away there. Coming into the climb, like we said. Approaching the climb, they won't want to take two bottles. Lottie Becker on the right of your screen in the grey rain jersey. Waterproof jersey just to keep the, the water off the back. And a boss on the right right hand uh, right hand of your screen following the wheel of Roxana Knetemann and Lisa Brenauer. She's there, Mayana Voss, the winner of the Spa Cousin Giro. Also um, Anna van der Breg, of course, we saw we see a lot of riders for uh, specialized Lululemon as well. Giant Shimano have strength in numbers. Bulls are there with four riders, including Lizzie Armitstead. High Tech have um, two or three, and Alexandra Nesmar is the Swedish rider in the last wheel, doing a stellar job here against all these uh, top ranked UCI women's cycling teams. Three hours of racing. We are in the last 20k, about 15k to go from here as we go on for the climb for the penultimate time. And are, going, are they going to use it as a launching platform, so to say? I think they have to wait to the last lap to do so. Pacing there by Caroline Canuel, the um, Canadian pocket rocket, as, as, as Evelyn Stephen calls her. Well, Lizzie Armitstead on the top, top of your screen there. Just getting out of the seat. She looks very, very comfortable. Just a class act this year. Here goes Rabobank again. So they're on the attack. They want to make the race hard. Knetemann. Knetemann digs deep, puts some pressure on. She's the daughter of former world champion, Gerry Knetemann. And Lizzie Armitstead, she says, OK, you want to play hard? I'm up for this. Let's just, go. Just to put some pressure on and say, well, OK. We've got Armistead, Brenauer, Knetemann, Rosella Rato for uh, Estado de Mexico. And then uh, Claudia Lichtenberg trying to close the gap there for Giant Shimano. We see Kirsten Wilt in the background having a tough time. And then uh, it looks like a little split at the Rosvelo rider. That's what we like to see. Lizzie Armistead, the winner of the World Cup Series, taking it on from the front. Not scared of putting herself in a vulnerable position. She's got a good lead on the World Cup Series. and. Rosella Rato. Rosella Rato also had a strong race here last year. Didn't quite make it to the finish with the leaders, but she was definitely having a strong ride, so she'll take some confidence from that. But uh, look at Mariana Voss and Kirsten Wild very, very closely on the wheel there. Then Emmy Johansson. They all look very comfortable at this point. Will they let it come down to a sprint? That remains to be seen. Rato, she won a stage in the UK Women's Tour in um, the same conditions in a really rain-soaked Bedford. So she knows how to ride in these conditions. And we see another attack from Rabobank. And Rato is on the wheel of Van der Breche. Well, Brenner looks good. She's responded to all of these. You can see her in the Germans' national championship. She won Jersey. both the titles this year. 
both on the time trial and in the road race. The same goes for the woman on her wheel, Emma Johansson. But Lizzie Armistead, what a ride. What condition does she have? Here goes Rabobank again. She loves racing in the rain. She really does. Who's in the Brands? Rabobank are trying to apply the pressure, but not making any significant splits there with those top riders. And another attack from... Uh, See Lottie Becker of uh, Wiggle Honda just hanging off the back, wondering, do I go back for my sprinter? She doesn't know what to do. It's a confusing moment. She's in the lead break, but she's there without a sprinter. How strong is Lisa Brenauer today? She is marking another attack from Rabobank. Ellen van Dijk is there looking out for Lizzie Armitstead. Well, the combination of Ellen van Dijk and Lizzie Armitstead looks like a pretty strong one today. It has been really fruitful this year with van Dijk winning Flanders, with uh, Armitstead winning in Drenthe, and especially van Dijk being so important for uh, most of Armitstead's podium places it's in the World Cup. This is rubber bank again. You see out of the seat putting the pressure on, but Lizzie Armitstead, she hasn't even blinked an eyelid. She's just <laughs> closing those uh, gaps. So she's in really, really good form here for the World Cup in Sweden. There's a gap going, so there's a lot of riders under pressure, but uh, Lizzie Armitstead, this is an impressive display of confidence being the race leader of the World Cup series. Beforehand, she didn't really have the statistics to, uh, to have a great race here. She didn't finish uh, last year, and in the, any other participation she had in 2011, she came in 14th, but she's showing that she is the overall World Cup leader. And she's doing a stellar job here, attacking. And, and the rider in second place on the World Cup standings, Emmy Johansson, she wasn't in those moves that were just made with Lizzie Armitstead. Her only job, Emmy Johansson, today would be to finish in ahead of Lizzie Armitstead. And she hasn't been able to follow those moves. So we see a different Lizzie Armitstead now than we did a couple of years ago. She seems very confident. She's 25 years old now been uh, in this pro peloton and coming uh, onto a good age and uh, progressing every year she's had uh, her best year so far winning the commonwealth games was um, something she really loved she was second in flanders a race that she really would have liked to win but who wouldn't it's one of the most prestigious races out there the tour of flanders on all those iconic climbs and cobbled sections another attack by rabo Liv. We keep repeating ourselves, but they do as well. And they've got strength in numbers. They've got Lucinda Brandt here, Annemiek van Vleuten, Marianne Vos, Anna van der Breggen. They're all there. Roxanne Kneteman, five riders are in this group. Only Talita de Jong is not, as far as I can see. Well, Rabo Liv, they would have been wanting to put the likes of Lizzie Armitstead and Emmy Johansson under pressure. But it all seems to be together. Lisa Brunoa leading the peloton there, as we said. Really strong today. Sorry, she's not leading. That was a bit deceiving picture. She's in second position behind Rabo. What are Rabo li Liv doing at the moment? Just tiring everybody out with constant attacks? or? Well, we didn't see an attack just now from Mariana Voss, so that would be their well, tactic at the moment, just to take you, opportunities. You bet there will be one. <laughs> there will be one on the way, that's for sure. But uh, to take opportunities, I think to put riders in a position up the road. Incredible <laughs> amount of water on this road here. Here we see another attack, so that's what they want to do. They want to get somebody up the road. Looks like Lucien Lebrant now. Flicking the elbow to take over. It's the universal gesture in all cycling. We're going towards the last 11 kilometers if we make our way back to Vogoda for the last uh, finish line crossing before we have the real finish of this race. 132 kilometers today under horrible circumstances. Rain, more rain, and it's cold as well. But as Rochelle explained before, the riders have uh, special creams to keep themselves warm and they will not suffer from hypothermia easily. It happens race uh, that you really get caught by the cold and it has uh, some sort of the same effect on you as having a hunger, hunger knock you can't think straight anymore hey who do we see there at the front Rochelle could it be Vera Kudara again 
She's she's back <laughs> at the front, so she's recovered again. And she's on a mission today. She's uh, she switched on, as I say. She woke up on the right side of the bed this morning, decided, yeah, I'm going to get out there. She's no stranger to this type of weather either. It's not the type of weather we have every day in the Netherlands, but just like in Sweden, there is a lot of rain there. We are going towards the last kilometre. Marcella Rato giving a good impression as well, but she is on her own. She doesn't have any teammates with her. Well, my prediction would have been that we would have seen a smaller group coming into the final lap than we, than we are seeing, but uh, still a lot of riders here in contention. Anything can happen. Very good odor as we see in fourth position. Just to the left in the white and red jersey. And on her left in the grey vest is Charlotte Becker from Wiggle Honda. In front of her, Rabobank. A very, very impressive ride from Vera Kudoda. A rider we haven't mentioned coming to the front for Wiggle Honda is Linda Willemsen. Well, she did a fantastic flash while on attacking the Mur de Wee with only a few seconds on the pack and everybody hoped and thought she was going to make it but the Mur de Wee is a gruesome thing and she got overtaken in the last five six hundred meters but she did a fantastic race there and just like Kudoda she's one of the riders who can really pull off that kind of a solo she's of course uh, a former world time trial world champion as well and she can really ride on her own just punishing herself on the pedals I had a little bit of a chat with Linda Willemsen about the time trial that she recently won at the Commonwealth Games. Uh, Emma Pooley was second, but interestingly, Linda Willemsen was eight and a half seconds down with only a few kilometres to go. And she took it in the end. And she took it in the end and wow. uh, she had no time check, so she didn't know that she was down. But uh, she was explaining to me how deep you can go when you're a time trial rider and judge it so you don't leave anything left on the road. This is Michael Paulspool coming towards the finish with Evelyn Stevens, Ellen van Dijk, Lottie Becker, Lucinda Brandt. They're all there. Kirsten Wilt is sitting in sixth position ahead of Susanna Zorzi for Astana. And they're coming towards the finish line. Emma Johansson is there, Ratto. Lisa Brenauer is in this group. And um, Roxana Kneteman, Vos, of course, Van der Brecher. Well, interestingly, with one lap to go, the sprinters are still in there. Kirsten Wield and Georgia Bronzini in the peloton, one to go. But Mariana Vos, surely she would be the one. Well, she counts as a sprinter as well nowadays. Well, not nowadays, always. She took on Kirsten Wilt in La Course, of course, that long dragging sprint on the cobbles in the Champs-Élysées in Paris. She uh, beat Bronzini three weeks ago in a Spa Cousin Giro, so she really doesn't have to give in anything to the main sprinters. But first we have one leader, and her name is Michael Paulspool, the Belgian rider for Giant Shimano. Evelyn Stevens, Becker, Van Dijk, Brandt, Lichtenberg still there. Very strong riders up front for Kirsten Wilt. You can see the names on your screen. All the big names are there. Amy Peters still in this group. She can also do great work for Kiss and Wilt. Shimana Post is there for Park Hotel, which is um, really great from the young rider from the Netherlands. Paul Spool, she has done a great race, marking many attacks so far. One of the taller riders in the peloton as well, coming from Belgium. And a little bit of looking at the moment. We have reached the last 10 kilometers of this World Cup race. Chantal Black for Specialized Lululemon and uh, Ellen van Dijk seems to be countering her. And then 
Rabobank and Giant Shimano. All the big teams are here. Giorgia Bronzini is in this group, but she's not really meddling with all the attacks, as she shouldn't, because she is the sprinter. And when the group storms towards the finish in about nine kilometers from now, she has to make her mark. Chantal Black is the one in the lead. She's new to the team of Specialized Lululemon, but she did a really great job in the team time trial on uh, Friday, winning with um, Specialized Lululemon. On the last climb of the day and it's about six kilometers from the top when we're at the top of this climb this uh, long dragging road up of about 500 meters i think it's about six percent it's about 6k to the top and who's going to use this to launch an attack the way down is a long straight road with some uh, pretty tricky corners here in Vogoda, where for, for the moment, it's dry. This is the group that got dropped. With Ratto and Kudoder. And now many riders up the road. leaders in the race we can see them here with black well it's interesting to see again the orica AAS have missed the move also wiggle honda they've got two or three back in the peloton so it'll be interesting to see who's going to chase this down but these riders have got a little bit of a dangerous break coming into the last climb See in a moment what that gap actually is. And all the names of the riders up front. We're waiting for confirmation on them. The awesome missing out on this move at the moment. It's Chantal Black leading the way, followed by Rabo Liv and um, a Bulls Dolman's rider. It's quite a handy lead that they've got in a very short amount of time, but they're about to turn on to the climb. That's where it's all going to happen. Left-hand turn here onto that climb with Chantal Black. Blackie, as she's called in her team. 24 years she lives of near, age. She lives near Rotterdam in the Nieuwekerk aan de IJssel. This is where she trains as well. And this uh, looks very nice, what she's doing, but we can see it all in one shot at the moment. Black on the top of your screen, two chasers and the peloton down here. Well, Chantal Black wanted to earn a position on that Dutch team that's so hard to get onto, possibly the hardest national team to get onto for a world championship. They're always an extremely strong team, the Dutch, and uh, really, really strong good bike riders miss out. And uh, she is saying today that uh, I'm in the form coming into the world championship, so I want an opportunity to be a part of that. Uh, I need to be there. <laughs> that Dutch team, and uh, she's doing a fab fabulous job out there. Chantal Black on the climb, followed by Annemiek van Vleuten, former winner of this race, and Claudia Lichtenberg, Hausler, the winner of the recent Route de France for Giant Shimano. So these are three very impressive bike riders here. Van Vleuten, and you can see her struggling on this climb with Lichtenberg on her wheel. And the peloton is back, and it's Bulls Dormans doing the work there, of course, for Lizzie Armitstead. You see Lizzie there in second position. Six kilometers left to ride here in Vogorda. 
Van Vleuten and Lichtenberg being reined in again. And uh, the group is getting smaller and smaller. But Kirsten Wilt, she's still there. Van der Brengen, Lizzie Armstead, Brenoa, Mariana Voss, Emmy Johansson. All the favourites very well positioned. And Kirsten Wilt, wow. You don't want to take her to a finish line. Absolutely not. And she's won here before. But Mariana Voss, there she goes. This Attack from the world champion. She is going towards her um, fellow Dutch woman, Chantal Black. But Lizzie Armstead, she is strong. Lizzie Armstead is uh, trying to fight her way back to the wheel of Mariana Voss today. Lisa Brenauer in the form of the day. Very strong German champion. Then oh. Emma Johansson. You see Rosella Rato and Kirsten Wilt hangs on. Lizzie Armitstead, there's not many people that could have closed that gap to Mariana Voss. But that was Liz impressive. That was very impressive. She's just stayed so composed today with all these moves and been able to close them down. And Lisa Branagh also very, very strong today. Emmy Johansson's still there. Can it be the year? She's definitely going to be the most hungry and want this the, the most of all the riders. And she's she not was. been in a position recently. She was third in 2009 and 2010. She was second last year. So she wants this win. Of course she wants it in front of her home crowd. Now sitting in fifth position as the as we see another attack from Rabobank. This is where their strength in numbers come into play and that's why we said they're the favorite team for today. And it's... Uh, but look at that, Lisa Brenoa straight on the back of that, no problem. Is it Knetemont? I think it is. Across comes Emmy Johansson in the yellow helmet. Green. For Orica. Who's got Orica left in this group apart from Johansson? I don't see anybody else. Maybe in the third to last wheel. Just behind Ratto. Another attack now. Five kilometers left to go, maybe even four. Remember the last 330 meters are in a straight line, but it, it has one very tricky corner before coming on to the finish straight today. Oh, Rabobank, that's a strong move. Only one rider to follow. At least a Brunner again. Well, that's a that's a gap. Emmy Johansson has to do the work. She has to dig deep to get this uh, to get this countered. But we have a, a little gap, and she has to do the work on her own. She doesn't have the strength in numbers that Rabobank or Giant Shimano have here. She has to do the work on her own. Well, this is where she needs a teammate. If Emmy Johansson had a couple of teammates here at this end, uh, this point of the bike race, if they didn't miss that earlier move, they didn't have to use all the teammates to uh, pull that back. And she may have had some teammates left here, but that that gap that she's just closed is going to take a lot out of her legs for the finish. Kirsten Wield in a very strong position there. She's been following wheels. Another a strong attack by a rubber bank rider. Very, very strong. Again, this could be Van Vluten. I, I think it is. And then uh, Armistead following with Ratto. But look at this, Armistead just closing those attacks she down. She is really strong today, Lizzie Armistead is. She won the first race of this World Cup cycle in the Ronde van Drenthe. She was Commonwealth champion only three weeks ago in Glasgow. And she counters the moves easily today. But there's still a certain Mayana Voss in this group, and you can never count her out. Well, it looks like Lizzie Armistead was just looking in the peloton to see who was there. There's perhaps not much of a peloton left. <laughs> perhaps looking for Mariana Voss and wanting to be on the wheel for a little while of Mariana Voss, but uh, she's a difficult rider to come over, so you really need to get the jump on her. Ratto has uh, made a solid impression. I think she's going to try on her own. But for now, Rabobank have this under control. Jan Shimano really strong. And Johansson is isolated at the moment. Well, she's done a great job to still be in the running this close to the finish line. Another attack on the left side of the road. 
It's specialised Lululemon. It's Stevens. See another rubber bank rider. They're not stopping. Why not? <laughs> Very close to the finish, but uh, they're not stopping today. They're just going to keep attacking. Yeah, every rider on the rubber bank team is having an opportunity to go for the victory today. And we see this move. There's this a bit of hesitation back there in the the small peloton, and the gap is growing. I think it's Chantal Black also and Lichtenberg. This is three times now we've seen rubber bank specialised. And giant Shimano all have a gap. We're going towards the last two kilometers. This is going to be very exciting. And Chantal Black again. Chantal Black tries again. Oh, this could be a move. Claudia Lichtenberg following. She's in great form. She won the route to France. And Knetemann is struggling for Rabobank. Knetemann is struggling to get to the wheel of the German. We're going towards the last kilometre here. It doesn't look like it's going to be a sprint of a big group, but who knows? Things are heating up here. Well, the pressure's on Emma Johansson to bridge that gap, to be in the running for the podium. She has nothing to lose, so she's probably going to take that up herself. They're coming very close to the finish line now. A quick look over the shoulder to see if there's time to play around a little bit. Going towards the last K, waiting for that red flag. Chantal Black, Claudia Lichtenberg, Roxana Knetemann, three leaders at the moment. But the peloton is close. Well, it's all the Rabo, Rabo Bank riders at the front of the peloton. Brenau is there, Lucinda Brandt has Mayana Vos on her wheel. Lucinda Brandt with uh, Mayana Vos and then uh, Kirsten Wild. But still three leaders. Chantal Black, four specialised Lululemon. And they're in the final straight. It's going to be a sprint of two, a uh, three. I mean, it's going to be very exciting. Chantal Black is going to open this sprint. And Claudia Lichtenberg Hausler, Claudia Lichtenberg Hausler, 150 metres to go. Can she keep Chantal Black off her wheel? Chantal Black is Chantal Black is going to win this World Cup race. Or is Lichtenberg coming back? No, it's going to be Chantal Black for Specialized Lululemon. What a success for that team here in Sweden. So now they've got a major road race win as well. Absolutely. We were just saying that uh, they, they specialize in the team time trial. They got a World Cup win under their belt just days ago and now they've managed to win the World Cup in Sweden, the road race. The big win has come at the right time for them. You were I say saying, hello sponsors. You were saying they were looking for a sponsor for next year. They've resorted to crowdfunding at the moment to get enough funds to continue but uh, if that doesn't seal the deal with the sponsors, nothing will. So two World Cups in a couple of days. The team time trial, specialised Lululemon winners today. That was exhilarating. What a great finale here in Fogada and what a worthy winner in Chantal Black. And uh, yeah, yet again, a Dutch rider wins it the sixth time already. Well, it's a little bit like Dutch racing, the weather, <laughs> like I mentioned before. Um, the sprint, it's a, it's a not a smooth service. Here we see it again. Lichtenberg tried to open the sprint and uh, tried to get to the wheel of Chantal Black, but she can't. Roxana Knetemann is going to settle for third place today. And then Mayana Vos in the bunch. But the win is for Chantal Black. I think it's her first World Cup victory. Yes, absolutely. That'll be the biggest victory that she's had in her career. And very, very well deserved by the specialised Lululemon team. They came in with the confidence of having won the World Cup in the team time trial. You see Mariana Vos there comes across the line, the front of that small peloton. So Rabo Bank, perhaps a little bit disappointed, but like we said, they were going to open up the opportunities today for the other riders in the team. There's Chantal Black. Attacking style rider, Chantal Black, and she gets to reward that attacking style with a great World Cup win here 
And um, yet again, we see um, an attacking rider taking this instead of a bunch sprint. And here, I think one of the greatest riders of today, Vera Kudoda, she really made the race together with um, Marlin Rutlund. They were in a breakaway of two, and she kept going and going when she gets the mountain jersey. Amazing strength by Vera Kudoda. Be nice to see her on the podium later today. Tom Small is smiling. She knows that Chantal Black won this race. So um, it's double for specialized Lululemon here in Fagorda. And Krista Scrimger is going to be really happy with this. A very happy team manager indeed. And they invested a lot into this block of racing here in Sweden. They've been They've, here for weeks already. They, they have been here for weeks preparing for this. And uh, it's all paid off. They've taken it very seriously. They've given it focused attention. And they're very, very well-deserved winners today here in Sweden. Hopefully for the future of women's cycling, the specialized Lululemon team will seal the deal with a few sponsors for next year and continue celebrations there, come and small. They were all big players in today's victory. Trixie Warak, Evelyn Stevens, they're all there. And it was um, Carol Kenwell here. What an exciting race to be part of, Rochelle. And you could, uh, we, we have seen it from the start here on the UCI YouTube channel. And um, they really put on a show today, didn't they? Well, it was the most exciting race that we've seen here for a long time. Attacks all day, very unpredictable. And we didn't know till the final moment who was going to win today's bike race. Mariana Voss came in fourth. Kirsten Wield. Emmy Johansson in 10th place. So I think she sealed the deal. Um, no, she didn't. Uh, I mean, Lizzie Armstead is still not the overall World Cup winner. Well, Emmy Johansson would have moved a few points closer. But it's not a big thing. She's, uh... The winning team today, Specialized Lululemon, they really smashed the field on Friday with a 1 minute 21 second margin on Rabobank Live. And uh, the exact same team won today. Chantal Black is the winner in the Vogoda World Cup. It's the first World Cup victory for the Dutch rider. And um, yeah, that was it. From a breakaway. Well, that's the thing about this race. You don't know if it's going to be a breakaway or a sprint finish. But uh, we were thinking that it would be a small small group sprinting for the finish. But those three riders, when they went, uh, there was a moment's hesitation with the peloton. And they took advantage of the situation and they raced right till the line. You could see it was a very long, tiring sprint in the end. We're getting word that it was not Claudia Lichtenberg, but Amy Peters. But I'm not really sure. I think it wasn't. <laughs> But for sure is that Chantal Black won this race. Well, if it was Amy Peters, that's third two years in a row. But uh, didn't look like it. With I'm, I'm the, over, the exact My results second. say it's uh, Amy Peters, but both Rochelle and I are not so sure. So we're waiting for confirmation. Armstead was really strong. I'm looking forward to seeing her seal the deal next week in Pruitt. Well, it was uh, was interesting that she wasn't in the top 10. And the Emmy Johansson in 10th uh, place after having to cover quite a few moves in that last lap. It was impressive to see her still in the points for 10th place. We're waiting to find out what points Lindsay Armstead actually did earn today, if any, to see if it's possible that Emmy Johansson could take the win of the World Cup Series. We'll know in a few moments' time if it's possible for Emmy Johansson to take the World Cup victory from Lizzie Armiston. Well, what do you know? The sun is coming out here in Fagorda, so uh, the podium ceremony for one will be dry. It's uh, Chantal Black, Amy Peters, and um, 
And Roxanne Kneteman on the podium. We're going to see the sprint again. Chantal Black. Yeah, it is Amy Peters. Oh, that's third last year and second this year for Amy Peters. So that's an impressive ride. And Roxanne Kneteman in third. Fourth goes to Mariana Voss. And fifth to Kirsten Wilt. It does indeed look like Lizzie Armistead finished in front of Emmy O'Hanson. The results are very... A confronting results here at the moment, the things that we uh, hear from the judges. But on visual, we see that um, Lizzie Armistead did indeed finish ahead of um, Emma Johansson. Well, once we get the official confirmation of that, it looked on the pictures that we saw in the slow-mo replay that Lizzie Armistead crossed the line in front of Amy O'Hanson. It didn't come up on our initial results, but if that's the case, she has won the World Cup Series for 2014 with one race remaining. Absolutely phenomenal performance, given that she sat out two of the World Cups by choice. Amy Peters, Roxana Kneteman. So we're looking closely at the second group here to see if Lizzie Armistead was in front of Mayanne Vos, Kirsten Wilt. And to your right of Kirsten Wield, this is it is Lizzie, Lizzie Armistead. She finishes two places ahead of Johansson, meaning um, she got her 10 point margin. So if our math are correct, she has uh, she has won this, but we're waiting for uh, confirmation now. It's all a bit hectic here at the finish line in Fogorda. Conflicting reports on results that we get here in the commentary box. Unbelievable race. Really exciting stuff. Great performances by all the teams. And uh, what a performance of actually what women's cycling and teams actually are these days. You cannot win without the support of your teammates. And it's... It's such an inspiring thing to see that opportunities are given to all the riders of the teams. The, the big favourites sat back in the end and they gave opportunities to their teammates that worked tirelessly for them. So very unpredictable racing. It's hard to sit in a team meeting before a race these days and say what another team is going to do because so many teams have so many cards to play and they share it around and it's a, it's a real sport of opportunity at the moment. One thing we know for sure, we've got three Dutch riders on the podium today. Chantal Black, Amy Peters and Roxanne Kneteman. And um, that adds to the uh, long list of Dutch winners here. 2006, we had a Swedish winner, Susanna Ljungskog. 2007, it was Chantal Beltman. Then an American victory in 2008 with Corey Kelly Seehaver. Then Marianne Vos, Kirsten Wilt, Annemiek van Vleuten, Iris Slappendel and Marianne Vos again. So this is the sixth year in a row that a Dutch rider wins this race. It must be the weather, Rochelle. Though I do urge people that it's not always raining in the Netherlands. We do have occasional sunshine, though probably not as much as you have in Australia. <laughs> Well, it was very challenging out there for the riders today because it was so technical and it was so wet that a lot of energy would have been taken from those riders that are less experienced or less confident in the wet in the corners. Last group is uh, finishing here. They get to enjoy a few rays of sunshine. And now it's time to get the wet, the wet gear off and get some warm clothes on. What's the first thing you do after a wet race like this? Just go into the camper, get everything off and get into dry gear? Well, funnily enough, it's probably not the first thing you do because when you come in and you're so exhausted or disappointed, you sit there for a little while till you get cold. It takes the body a little bit, bit of time to, um, to cool down. But it really depends uh, how your emotions are after a race as to what you do. Uh, ideally, you would go straight into the camper and get the wet, wet clothing off. But... Um, you often see uh, the riders just sitting there and it's their masseurs and soigneurs that take the clothes from them, the arm warmers and the leg warmers, and wipe them down and everything and uh, 
then uh, the, all the women's teams have uh, campers or buses that have showers in them. So the riders, one by one, quickly wash down and get changed. But I think um, by now, 10, 15 minutes after the race, most of the riders will be out of their cycling kit on a day like this. Yeah, we had um. a post-race interview with Annemiek van Vloot and after the team time trial and her lips were blue with the cold when she uh, was going up for the podium ceremony. So um, really demanding circumstances today. Only 12, 13 degrees here for the riders. So it's um, basically nothing compared to the Flemish Spring Classic season last year where riders like Marijn de Vries even had frozen eyes. Well, that's uh, part of the challenges of cycling we hear a lot of track riders say that they don't like cycling um on the road because <laughs> they have to deal with Sissies. the rain the temperatures <laughs> the the wind so there's a lot of challenges um just to get through the races when the conditions are not so great um to mentally keep switched on and uh the dutch are quite tough i'll give you that they're quite tough and they're able to get through uh, these conditions without it uh bringing their morale down well, it was also very well played by Specialized Lululemon. They had many riders up there with Colin Small and, and Canuel and Stevens. They had strength in numbers, just like Rabobank and Giant and Bull's Head. Though Emma Johansson was left a bit on to her own devices in the finale. Yeah, absolutely. I think it might be because the team had to work for her. They made one really big mistake today of missing that break and having to use the team up. They did a fabulous job and had the strength to pull that break back. Uh, but they were on the back foot when they had to do that, use the teammates up early because had those three riders, Scandalara, Gillow and Hosking, been able to save their energy to the last two laps at the business end of the bike race, Amy Johansson would have had a little bit more support to use her teammates to close the gaps. And not only physically, but mentally to have some support there and not feel isolated and be wondering, what am I going to do if another attack goes and another one? Am I ready for this? And... It takes a lot of energy, and then coming into the finish, you think, oh, I've had to do all this work, and I don't have the legs. So you don't come into the sprint as aggressive, and, you know, um, Emmy Johansson potentially on another day could have finished top three um, in, a, in a peloton like that. But uh, unfortunately, those three that went away took the uh, big points that were on offer anyway. But uh, I think Emmy Johansson will be quite disappointed uh, with the fact that the team missed the break. And Here's our podium. A little bit shivering with the cold. They, they are. They do look cold. Chantel Black, all smiles. Like we said, biggest race win of her career. She started out in 2008 with the uh, AA cycling team, being with uh, Leontine von Morsel's team for uh, the next four years. Last year, one year with uh, Team Tipco, and then she was snatched up by Specialized Lululemon. She won the Wonder Race before the World Cup race in Drenthe, the Drenthe 8, this year. And, uh, well, this is uh, absolutely the biggest victory of the year for her. It's a fourth victory, actually, together with the team, of course, on Friday. And she also won the fifth stage in the Energiewacht Tour in uh, April, that was. She was fourth at the uh, National Time Trial Championships and some other uh, great top ten <laughs> results, but, uh, well, today really the icing on the cake, of course. <laughs> today was the third time she's finished in the top ten in this particular World Cup, so she likes it. No stranger to finishing at the, uh, the top end of the peloton in this particular race and having finished sixth in 2008 and seventh in 2010 and winning in 2014. It's a special place, Sweden, for this particular rider, Chantel Black. Specialised Lululemon, as we said. The moment couldn't have been more perfect for these victories here in Sweden. They are looking for sponsors. Both Specialised and Lululemon are going to leave the team. And they uh, sure pull out their calling card today to potential sponsors because we wouldn't, we wouldn't want to be associated with a, such an attacking team with such uh, great strength in the time trials. Luxana Knetemann, the oldest one on the podium here. She is 27, born on the 1st of April. And has been with uh, Rabobank for the third season. 23 years old, Amy Peters, very strong as well. And then uh, 24 years old, on the top step of the podium, and I think not a lot of people predicted this result, but it was um, well-deserved for Chantal Black. You can see the UCI emblem on the shirt. That is for the Team Time Trial World Championship, because that's what you get to wear when you win that title. And she'll probably be there next month for the Team Time Trial, and hopefully, the national coach, Johan Lommerts, has seen this 
and that will select her also for the road race team. Well, that would have had to be enough, I think, a World Cup victory to make your way into the Dutch team for the World Championships. And uh, no doubt Mariana Voss would have some say about that, building the most ideal Dutch team for the World Championships. Chantel Black, very, very deserving position in that team. Amy Peters, huge career ahead of that uh, woman. Very strong rider, very intelligent girl as well, race-wise. Her father is the uh, national team coach for the uh, Belgian track team, Peter Peters. Nice to get a nice, nice picture, nice framed picture of this race. They already got a hammock on Friday for winning the team time trial. It's an interesting prize, a hammock, yeah, in this, in this climate it is. Yeah, Roxana Knetemann, the daughter of uh, former world champion Fede Knetemann. And uh, she does a lot of work for her teammates. If we look at the uh, right London Grand Prix, the amount of work she put in for Mayana Vos. And she's always uh, selflessly working for the team, and she's got a nice podium place here. It's a very nice to see the domestiques of the big teams like Rabo and also Amy Peters from Giant Shimano working for Kirsten Wheel throughout the season. Now finishes with second in a World Cup. But Chantel Black has worked en endlessly, tirelessly for specialized Lululemon leaders and today put herself in a position to take the victory and pulled it off, which means the team will be confident to leave her in breakaways in the future and not bring them back. Well, if you look at the Dutch national team, just like you said, oh, we're going to listen to the Dutch anthem first. today's Fugolda Crescent World Cup. The leader's jersey is still for Lizzie Armstead. We're still waiting for uh, full results of this stage to see if she's, cl she's clinched it definitely. The uh, mountain jersey goes to Fira Kudoder. Ira Slappendel is still the points jersey wearer. And uh, Elena Cecchini is best young rider for uh, Estado de Mexico. Those are the classifications after today. Next week on Saturday, we're going to see uh, the last leg of this uh, UCI Women World Cup in Plouay. And you're also able to see it live on the UCI YouTube channel. So uh, let's hope for some exciting racing on that circuit there in in the west of France, where it can also rain a lot and be particularly cold as well. Well, despite the rain, very good crowds here in Sweden. Quite a big following of women's cycling building in Sweden due to this fabulous event. Here we see Lizzie Armistead absolutely deserving of that World Cup leaders jersey this year. And we haven't been given official confirmation, but it looks like she has secured that jersey overall for 2014. All smiles, we're not sure if she's done the calculation, but no doubt she knows the position that she's in leading into the last World Cup round of 2014. But absolutely the most consistent rider over all types of courses this year. Winner in Ronde van Drenthe, runner-up in Flanders, Trofeo Binda and in Flesh Wallon. And um, here she is, the Commonwealth champion, Lizzie Armistead. See if we're also going to see the other podium ceremonies. We have a new leader in the mountain classification. Are you ready? There should be a big roar from the crowd now when this rider walks out onto the podium. What a day for Fira Kudolder. She um, 
jumped on the wheel of the Swedish rider Malin Rutlund and endlessly attacking and when she was in that group she still took the lead and even in the peloton she tried a little attack there's no stopping her today and as a prize she gets this mountain jersey I don't know if they have it in her size but that is a great reward for a great race by Vera Kudoder. So wonderful to see a rider that uh, works so hard be rewarded. I'm sure she didn't imagine that she would be on the podium pulling on the mountains jersey today. I guess not, no. <laughs> but, uh, and may never even have thought in the World Cup series that she'd have the ac actual potential. She's going to have a fight on her hands next week in Plouet holding on to that jersey. But uh, Elena Amiusik is also um, on 12 points at the moment. But this is a worthy... Um, reward for the race that she's done. She really animated the race. We still don't have official confirmation about uh, the result for Lizzie Armstead. Uh, this is the last podium we're going to show you today. It's Elena Cicchini, the Italian champion. She is the leader in the Young Riders classification. And... Um, if she took points today, then uh, she clinched this victory, or else it's going to be uh, down to next week in Plouet. Lovely rider as well, the Italian champion for Estado de Mexico. One of the upcoming stars as well, together with Rossella Rato on that team. Very handy little sprinter from Italy. Finished second place there in China to Kirsten Wield at the World Cup. So, Elena Cecchini, all the jersey wearers present here today. Young Riders jersey, Lizzie Armistead, World Cup leader. And Vera Kudoda, Mountains jersey wearer at the end of today's World Cup. Well, that's it for today for, from us here in Vogorda. I would really love to thank Rochelle Gilmore for her insightful comment on today's race. My name is Jose Bain, and uh, we'll see you soon on the UCI YouTube channel for more exciting women's cycling racing. So, I don't know, Lizzie Armistead is the winner of the World Cup 2014.